Hello, Commissioner Whitry. Good afternoon, Commissioner Whitry and Commissioner Stieg and all the ships at sea. Our Council Quigley. <laughs> Welcome, Commissioner Mobley. <laughs> Welcome. For those of you that are just joining us, we're just waiting for a quorum to start the meeting. Looks like we do have five. Thank you. My name is Commissioner Witchery. Today is December 14th, 2021. I will go ahead and read our special public hearing rules for CPC hearing held video conferencing. Welcome everyone. The order of business today the order of business at the hearing shall be as follows. Call to order and roll call with recording of members present. Commissioner Alexander. Present. Commissioner Brown. Present. Commissioner Lund. Present. Commissioner Mobley. Present. Commissioner Stewart. Present. Commissioner Steeg. Here. Commissioner Weberg. Commissioner Wittry, and I'll note that Commissioner Flick is also absent today. Approval of the minutes, reading of the hearing rules. Commissioner Steak, uh, thank you. Presentation of dockets, staff presentation, applicant presentation, question from members, recess for 30 minutes, consideration of dockets, public comment, rebuttal by applicant, questions from members, voting, and adjournment. Presentation of dockets. The order of business for each docket shall be as follows. Presentation by the city planning commission staff or the Department of Safety and Permit staff, presentation by the applicant or their representative, the appellant or applicant may appear on their behalf or be represented by a duly authorized agent. Only one representative may speak on behalf of a request and must pre-register with the staff of the city planning commission. Other representatives or speakers may sign up to provide comments during the public comment portion of the meeting this applicant shall be allowed a maximum of three minutes. Question from members. The members have an opportunity to ask questions of the staff or applicant. Recess. The commission shall take a 30 minute recess to allow members of the public to comment. Public comment. Rules. Only written public comment will be allowed. Live public comment will not be allowed. No member of the public may submit more than one written comment per agenda item. Time allowed for public comment. The public comment form will be made available at the start of the meeting and will close at the end of the 30 minute recess. Form, public comments must be submitted electronically on the form provided by the City Planning Commission. Any comment missing that information will not be read out loud. 
Each submission must contain the commenter's first and last name, their address, and whether they are being paid in connection with his or her comments in the agenda item. Reading of public comments. A moderator will read into the record all comments pertaining to that item that have been submitted in accordance with these rules. Comments will be read out loud in a normal speaking voice. The moderator will just continue reading a comment once it exceeds two minutes. Rebuttal by applicant. Following the public comment period, if there is opposition, the authorized representative of the application is allowed a rebuttal not to exceed three minutes. Question from members. Following the public comment and rebuttal, the members have an opportunity to ask questions of the staff or applicant. Voting. Making a motion. The member making a motion shall clearly state their name when making a motion. For example, I, Commissioner Witchery, move to approve, deny the request. Seconding the motion, the member seconding a motion shall clearly state their name when seconding the motion. For example, I second the motion made by the prior uh, member. Statement by chair. The chair will reinstate the motion confirming who made the first and the second. Voting, the chair will request a verbal vote from each member by roll call. Each member will indicate yay in support of the motion or nay in opposition. Our first order of business is the adoption of the minute, minutes from the November 3rd or 30th, 2021 meeting. Could I have a motion, please? Commissioner Lana, move for adoption of the minutes from the November 23rd CPC meeting. And Steve seconds. Thank you. Commissioner Lund made a motion and approval and Commissioner Steeg seconded. I will call Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Lund. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Steeg. Yes. And Commissioner Whitry. Yes. Seven yeas, the motion passes. We'll move on to zoning docket 101-21 for staff report. Hi, this is a request by Louisiana Rose to approve a permit for a conditional use to permit a commercial educational facility in a C1 general commercial district. We're having a hard time hearing you. Do you mind turning your volume up? Is it better like this? Yes. Thank you okay, so, so much. This is a request by Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation for a conditional use to permit a vocational education facility in C1 General Commercial District. The petition property is located at the convergence of General Gold Drive, Woodland Highway, and Woodland Drive, close to the Intercultural Waterway. The site, which is approximately 3.72 acres in area, is a vacant parking lot adjacent to a vacant shopping center. The proposed truck driving school would be operated from a new approximately 600 square feet building. And aside from the new structure, only minor, uh, minor improvements are proposed on the site which are required to meet the landscape requirement of the CVO. The school should have a positive impact on the community by providing educational services to the neighborhood. Considering the location of the site on the portion of vacant parking lot adjacent to an abandoned shopping center, and at the intersection of major soil affairs, the proposed use should not have a negative impact on surrounding properties, and any traffic increase would be easily absorbed by the surrounding street network system. The site does not directly abut any residential uses that may be negatively affected by the activities occurring on the subject parking lot. Therefore, staff is recommending approval of the request subject to one waiver and seven provisos. Thank you, Sabine. Is there an applicant present? There should be. Yes. Please state your name. Nidra, your Hen 
Nidra Henson, 6110 Aaron Drive, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70126. Thank you. You have two minutes. So um, my company, we're asking for zoning changing because we're a truck driving school and I think it'll be a great um, access to the community. Um, the reason why we need the trailer on our property is so that our students can have access to classrooms, bathrooms and equipment that they would need for training. Um, if, we, if zoning is approved, we plan on getting a new gate, mm -hmm. landscaping signage, um, we have had a positive impact from community um, partners. So this is something we're really looking forward to. Thank you so much. Thank you. And it is approval of zoning doc with one waiver, seven provisos. Do the, any of the commissioners have questions for the applicant or staff? I'm sorry, just one question to the applicant, uh, Ms. Hinton. You're aware of the seven provisos in the waiver and acceptable to you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Let's move on to zoning docket 102-21. Zoning docket 10221 is a request to rezone 5329 St. Rock Avenue, lot X, a vacant 14,400 square foot site located at the corner of St. Rock Avenue and Prentice Avenue from an SB1 suburban business district to an SRS suburban single family residential district. If approved, the applicant plans to resubdivide the site into lots X1 and X2 to develop two single family residences. The SB1 Suburban Business District, the site's current zoning, is intended to provide primarily for retail shopping and personal service uses that primarily serve nearby residential neighborhoods. The general character of this type of development should be sensitive to and compatible with more suburban residential surroundings. The SRS Single Family Residential District, the requested zoning designation, is intended for single family residential neighborhoods developed after World War II where a more uniform lotting pattern is evident with larger generally uniform setbacks. While the site's neighborhood commercial future land use designation under the plan for the 21st century, the master plan, generally contemplates neighborhood oriented commercial development, it does also allow for single and two family residential uses. The SRS district, while not viewed as consistent with neighborhood commercial per appendix A of the comprehensive zoning ordinance, also does not pose any intrinsic conflict with it, particularly because none of the consistent districts allow for single family use. Due to this, the request does not conflict with the goals of the plan for the 21st century. Additionally, the site has sat vacant since demolition of the prior structure after Hurricane Katrina. While a use contemplated under the SB1 district would be ideal, the zoning change would allow for more immediate redevelopment of the site in an otherwise semi-dormant small commercial area. In light of its analysis, staff finds that the rezoning of this property to an SRS single family residential district would meet the approval standards of Article 4, Section 42E and recommends approval of zoning docket 10221. Thank you so much, Emily. Is there an applicant present? Yes. I'm Alex Modinger. I'm the architect uh, representing the owner. Uh, my address is 1558 Annunciation Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70130. Uh, it's a simple, simple request uh, to divide this into two lots. We held an NPP meeting and specifically to address some of the neighborhood concerns. Um, there, there's been lack of activity on the, on the block. One of the immediate neighbors was concerned about drainage in the area and was happy to see the development come. And my, my client was able to, during the NPP meeting, assure them that positive drainage and, and suitable uh, fencing and, and, and landscaping would be done around them as well. Uh, the neighbor was happy to see a residential development coming in over commercial. Uh, other than that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We felt that because we were an SRS district adjacent and the, the alignment with the SB1 and its placement there with the larger master plan 
felt that this was a suitable reuse of the lot. And we respectfully request that on your behalf, on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you so much. Commissioners, do you have a question for staff or the applicant? I'm hearing them, we'll move on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Zoning the docket, oh. Sorry, yes. <laughs> I was just gonna say the next item is zoning docket 103.21. Haley, take it over, it's good to see you. <laughs> Hi. Gentilly Baptist Church is in the pre-construction phase for a new place of worship at the corner of Elysian Fields Avenue and Lafreniere Street. The now vacant site was formerly developed in the mid-1980s with the Elysian Fields Baptist Church that was demolished following Hurricane Katrina. In 1981, under zoning docket 6980, the site received conditional use approval to operate a daycare at this site. Now that the use is no longer operating, this zoning docket 10321 would rescind the ordinance. The proposal meets the standards of revocation of conditional use set forth in Article 4, and therefore the staff recommends approval of this request. And this is a request by City Council motion. Thank you, Haley. So there's not an applicant present, I assume. Hearing none, commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? For Haley? I hear none, we'll move on to zoning docket 104-21. Uh, zoning docket 104-21 is a request by city council motion number M21328 uh, for the city planning commission to consider a text amendment, which would create a new use category named boat dock, which would allow the rentals of boats as a conditional use in the maritime mixed use, Lake area marina, Lake area park, open space regional, open space neighborhood and natural area districts. <clears throat> this city council motion was initiated because the comprehensive zoning ordinance does not currently include a use that allows for boat rentals along waterways. The affected area of the text amendment includes larger regional parks such as Audubon uh, City Park, Joe Brown Park, and Brechtel Parks. And it would also impact open spaces along waterways such as Bay St. John, Lake Pontchartrain, uh, the wetlands in New Orleans East, and the marinas near West End and the Lakefront Airport. Though the city is surrounded by water, opportunities for water-based recreation can be limited. This text amendment will provide residents with greater access with the water that surrounds the city and will promote a physical activity that can enhance the health of the city residents. The staff supports the proposed text amendment to allow boat docks as a conditional use in the districts listed in the motion and has recommended modifications to add a definition for the use and uh, a requirement that if off street parking is provided, all spaces must be constructed of permeable materials. The staff's proposed definition will limit the use to non-motorized watercraft and parking and the parking recommendation will help reduce stormwater runoff from these water adjacent uses in the city waterways. The staff recommends modified approval of zoning docket 10421. Thank you, Larry. Commissioners, do you have any question on the zoning docket for staff? Hearing none, we'll move on to zoning docket 105-21. Thank you, Madam Chair. Zoning docket 105-21 is requested by city council motion. The proposed text amendment would authorize outdoor amphitheater in the AC1 Arts and Cultural Diversity Overlay District as a conditional use. An outdoor amphitheater is defined as an outdoor structure that accommodates an audience for concerts, public speaking, or other live entertainment which is open to the general public with or without an admission charge. An outdoor amphitheater includes band shell structures. In 2021, the City Planning Commission adopted the Outdoor Live Entertainment Study, which recognized the importance of music to New Orleans culture, the need for more outdoor venues, especially in the times of the COVID pandemic, and generally recommended increasing zoning allowances for outdoor live entertainment uses. 
the commission um, especially supported the concept of increased allowances in the arts and culture overlay districts, which were created for the purpose of promoting the arts and live music. This text amendment was introduced with a companion motion that is intended to authorize an outdoor amphitheater at the Broad site, a location along Broad Street adjacent to the Lafitte Greenway. While the council motion addresses the problem, the staff recommends a different approach that is rooted in the recommendations of the 2021 Outdoor Live Entertainment Study. The study recommends amendments to the live entertainment secondary use standards to allow outdoor live entertainment subject to standards under the scope of the motion, the staff can only recommend authorizing outdoor live entertainment as a conditional use. While hours of operation can be established by the conditional use ordinance may be useful to establish standards within the overlay district for consistency purposes. The study recommended that outdoor live entertainment be allowed later into the evening in the arts and cultural overlays than elsewhere in the city. The staff's recommended modifications reflect the reality that in the AC1 overlay, most opportunities for outdoor live entertainment, uh, including amphitheaters, need a supporting bar or restaurant. The recommended modifications will expand authorization for any bar and restaurant to provide outdoor live entertainment subject to standards and through the conditional use process. This amendment will promote the cultural resources and economy of the city while providing opportunities for congregation in safer outdoor settings during this time of pandemic. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention states that the virus spreads when an infected person breathes out droplets and very small particles and can be breathed in by other people on land or on their eyes, noses, or mouth. And the CDC has consistently advised that outdoor gatherings are safer than indoors based on this type of transmission. So this text amendment is compatible with the intent and purposes of the ordinance, which already identifies appropriate corridors such as Broad Street and St. Bernard Avenue for more permissive live entertainment regulations and implements recommendations of the master plan and chapter six, cultural resources management and historic preservation. So the staff recommends modified approval. Thank you, Paul. Commissioners, do you have any questions on the staff report from Paul? Hearing none, we'll move on to zoning docket 10621. Zoning docket 10621 is the property specific uh, companion application to the text amendment Paul just described. It's for the broad side, which as you probably recall, came through the city planning commission process a couple months ago for a conditional use to allow this facility to go from a temporary response to COVID to a permanent entertainment venue. At the time that was considered by the Planning Commission and then ultimately approved by the council, uh, the, the bar component of the development was something that was allowed with conditional use approval, but the live performance component cannot could not be approved under the regulations that exist today because as Paul noted, in this zoning district, there's no opportunity for outdoor live performance venues. And so in considering the original conditional use application, the uh, council also presented the text amendment to provide a pathway for live entertainment venues to be established in this arts and cultural overlay district. And so looking at this particular site, um, while the entirety of the AC1 district is relatively well suited to outdoor entertainment, this site is really uniquely well positioned to outdoor entertainment given its location where the broad corridor meets the greenway corridor. Uh, both of those are really intended for commercial and recreational development, and they're in a highly non-residential context. So the sorts of uh, impacts that outdoor amusement facilities and outdoor entertainment venues could have largely in terms of noise aren't present to the same way because you have these commercial uses, recreational properties, and, and historic industrial properties along the Greenway and Broad, which really insulate this property um, from nearby residences and make it less impactful, even though there would be an outdoor entertainment component. Uh, so having said that, the, uh, the staff re recommends approval of the application. The provisos are mostly unchanged from the existing provisos within the, the existing conditional use but they're tweaked a little bit in response to this particular application. And these staff recommends approval with those 11 provisos. 
And uh, Madam Chair, uh, I should have noted in the previous docket, we do have Brian Knighton, who the council member has authorized to speak on, on both the text amendment and the, uh, the conditional use. Thank you, Paul. So let's back up one second, because I do see that Commissioner Weberg is present. I wanted to make that note. Welcome, Commissioner Weberg. Thank you, Commissioner. And to follow up then, um, if city council has approved um, Mr. Knighton to speak, he would be considered the applicant and would he have two minutes or four minutes based on these two zoning items? Authorized for both, correct? Paul, Stephen? What did you say, Missy? Um, the council member authorized him to speak on both items? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and give him four minutes then. Mr. Knight, are you present? Mr. Knight, we can't hear you, or at least I can't. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. You might need to, <laughs> you might need to Knight, check the next, you. Brian. Definitely unmuted, but maybe the, the connection. Maybe we'll give him a second to figure this out and we'll move to the other zoning docket. Why don't we do that? Maybe join from your phone if you're able to. So then I'll hold any commissioner comments until after the applicant speaks. I believe then we're going moving on to zoning docket 107-21. All right, th thank you, Madam Chair. Zoning docket 107-21 is a request by City Council of Motion for a text amendment to create a new use category similar to waste transfer stations, but with operational and design characteristics at a less intense scale that may be provided at locations throughout New Orleans that are more convenient to its citizens. The proposal is intended to facilitate post-disaster removal and combat rampant illegal dumping by providing a free or nominal cost location to take debris and other materials that often end up being dumped in isolated or secluded areas. The staff's recommendations would authorize the use only in the CZOs, um, more intense districts, general commercial, industrial, and general plan development districts, and would incorporate numerous standards that address an auto-oriented drop-off facility that must also be sensitive to neighboring commercial properties. The staff has recommended modified approval. Thank you, Paul. Commissioners, are there any questions for Paul on this staff report? And uh, Madam Chair, we do have representatives from the administration on the line, um, Jonathan Wisby and Matt Torrey. Thank you so much. Is this appropriate time to make some comments? Yes, and if you would please state your name and your address, and um, you have two minutes, sir. Yes, uh, Jonathan Wisby, uh, Chief Technology Officer for the City, uh, John, we're going to stop you for a second just because there's a bad connection and we can only hear every other word and we want to give you the benefit of listening. I apologize. Are you able to switch lines or? Maybe we'll also come back to John and give him a second. Um, Mercury must be in retrograde for all technical issues. Um, John, if you can hear us, um, it's actually is there somebody the else that? Commissioner Whitry, yes, it's, actually, it's, it's actually the meteor shower uh, from last night. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is there somebody else that, um, I, I know, Paul, that you would mention that there were two individuals that were representing? Um, uh, Matt Torrey, are you still on the line? Yes, I'm here if you can hear me. Matt, we can hear you. Are you prepared to um, present? as the applicant on this matter? 
I certainly can can speak on on the matter, yes, and hopefully John is able to rejoin and and also uh, speak to it as well. So please, Nature, um, your name and your address, and you have two minutes. Okay, my name is uh, Matt Tory. I'm the director for the Department of Sanitation. My address is 406 40th Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70124. Um, uh, thank you for take, letting us have the opportunity to speak to this very important item. Um, the city has long had a need for uh, alternative um, drop-off sites for solid waste um, from primarily residential and small business locations. The closest uh, municipal solid waste landfill is River Birch Landfill, which is in Avondale, Louisiana. Um, on the west bank of the city, quite a quite a drive, um, and certainly not convenient for for residents to drop uh, debris there in any type of passenger vehicle. Um, many of our neighboring parishes throughout the state have opened what are called uh, drop off locations, um, which are facilities um, which have raised platforms with uh, dumpsters surrounding them, which allow residents to um, self service drop. Uh, municipal solid waste um, at these locations. Many also provide opportunities for residents to um, drop off recycling materials there, which can be um, taken to recycling processors. Uh, the city of New Orleans um, does not have uh, any of these uh, drop off facilities open to date. We're seeking um, to open um, several of these drop off facilities throughout the city as part of the mayor's cleanup NOLA initiative. Um, our, our expectation is these drop-off facilities will provide uh, convenient um, locations for residents to drop off debris at no cost, um, which would uh, likely alleviate uh, illegal dumping that happens throughout the city, um, as well as give uh, residents a, a location to, to drop off debris, which cannot, which who currently can't utilize locations like the River Birch Landfill. Um, I, I believe uh, there is a tremendous amount of value in, in opening these sites, and uh, we hope that the commission is supportive of these endeavors. And this is Jonathan. I'm back, but Matt said it better than I could have. So thank you, commissioners. We appreciate uh, the opportunity to available for any questions. Thank you so much. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant or staff? Oh, yes. Sorry, Commissioner Lund, a question. Um, uh, what, any idea on the time frame of, of these sites and the number of them? The time frame to actually uh, shovel ready? So in terms of time frame, uh, sorry, Matt, do you want to go ahead? No, go ahead, John. Uh, I, I would say that, you know, this process here is one of the key factors. We have identified some sites that are city owned that we think would be appropriate for this. Once this, uh, this change, because if it passes, we'll go back and evaluate them for how they fit under this rule and put together a conditional use uh, request for those sites. Uh, we're hopeful that sometime by, you know, summer of next year, we'll be able to stand up and, and be able to make improvements at and open these sites, but there's a lot of contingencies on that. Um, the other thing uh, you'd asked was regarding the number. Uh, right now, we have a target of three, which would be one on the West Bank, one in the East, and one where that's sort of centrally located on the East Bank. Um, what I will say is that we're willing to go forward with fewer than that if we cannot find enough suitable sites. Uh, and we're confident we'll at least be able to put together one on the West Bank and one on the East Bank, with possibly the second on the East Bank being required uh, to undergo some further discussions around land ownership and uh, suitability. Thank you. Any further questions for the applicant or staff? Hearing none, we'll see if uh, Mr. Knighton is available. Paul, you may be able to see him better than I. Oh, I can see. I, I'm here, can you hear me? Perfect, thank you so much. I'm just going to um, remind everyone that we're gonna give you four minutes. This is on zoning docket 105.21 and zoning docket 106.21. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Brian Knighton, 636 North Broad. I'm the owner of the Broad Theater and then the owner of uh, the, the proposed broadside next door to us here. Um, I don't have many things to say. I, I believe this is uh, my 
fourth time, third or fourth time in front of CPC uh, regarding this site. Uh, this seems to be our final hurdle, um, getting the outdoor live music uh, component tied in. Um, in the past, we I have put out calls and just you know to various folks to send in letters of support. I did not do that this time, but we did have I believe over sixty five or so comments, uh, positive comments last time. We've had one negative comment, if I remember correctly. Um, so you may hear from that gentleman again today. Uh, he is a neighbor, uh, and I regularly speak to him uh, about issues. But my 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 point that I I, I wanted to make now is. Um, you know, regarding the amphitheater status and the limitations on its use, um, it is currently set, I believe, for three days per week as, a, as an amphitheater. But I would love to uh, ask if we can possibly extend that to four days per week, uh, given that we are in the arts and cultural district. Three days is a little difficult. There are often many weeks since we've opened where we've only had three days worth of events. But uh, then there are other times of the year, particularly during Jazz Fest, where we want to offer more uh, events. And secondly, if there could possibly be an extension on uh, the hours. So instead of ending at 10 p.m., if we can end at 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights only, uh, and I'm even willing to do that on a limited basis, a limited number of that hour extensions per year. But that, that, that's it for me. Um, happy to take any questions. Um. Madam Chair, do you mind if I respond? Oh, please go ahead. Okay. Um, so the uh, recommended recommendations of zoning docket 105-21 would no longer uh, use the outdoor live outdoor amphitheater use as the as the use that would the broad side would be classified as, be classified as a bar with outdoor live entertainment, and there's no limit on the number of nights. Uh, however, the hour and the hours of operation would be uh, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday and 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Um, now, this does go through the conditional use process, um, so it, it, those could be adjusted by city council. But I, I think, uh, Brian, you said 10 o'clock was the hour that you were looking to close, right? 10 o'clock is the hour that we have been operating at, and that works perfectly fine. But, you know, as I mentioned, during particular times of the year, uh, like Jazz Fest, um, you know, 11 o'clock, 10, 30, 11 o'clock would be great. Uh, and thanks for clarifying on that, because I was a little confused, too, whether uh, we were going for the outdoor amusement or we were adjusting or you were adjusting the outdoor live music as part of the um, live entertainment. So yeah, thanks for clarifying. I have a question for Paul. Um, so they will, Brian now need to come back again for conditional use under the new, if we pass text amendment, the zoning docket 105-21? No, he will not. Uh, 106-21 will take care of that. Take care of that. But in his request for extended hours on certain nights or certain number of, of nights per year, could that be done? Could that be addressed today? I think we would probably recommend that that be handled through a special event permit that could be applied to just certain times of the year. Um, I think it might be unusual to, to write in those days into uh, the conditional use, although I, I suppose that it's conceivable. Okay. But uh, then those would be much harder to adjust in the future, whereas a special event permit um, can change from year to year. So, um, Brian, do you feel like you could address it through special use, through, through special use permits? I certainly do. Um, I feel personally that the special events office needs a lot of staffing. Um, and I would hate to just add to that uh, work burden, um, but uh, I, I, I mean, I, I do, I do see what uh, to Paul's point. I, I do think that that could work. Yes. I'm just uh, just need a little clarification. So if a, if an applicant came forward after zoning docket 105-21 were passed, and they um, and they were to ask for 
under their conditional use, also an exception that they be allowed for to be open a certain number of nights a year past what's in the, um, in the zoning docket, how would we deal with that? Same thing you're saying, we would suggest that they do a special event permit. Yes, I mean, I'm, I anticipate more that in other locations, there might be, the, the council might want to reduce those hours of operation. Um, you know, if they're not, this happens to be in a sort of an ideal location where the broadside is located, but there could be others that are, that are closer to residential use. Is there a concern that if we were to address it today under zoning docket 10621 and maybe the provisos that it would set a precedent? Or could there be a concern? Could there be a concern of that? Well, I mean, uh, a conditional use is um, a case by case analysis. Mm -hmm. So okay. Okay. I'm not sure. All right, thank you, Paul. Any further questions on this matter from commissioners? If not, we'll move on to subdivision docket 055-21. Subdivision docket 055-21 is a request to subdivide lots A, B, D, E, F, G, 2, 18, 19, 4, 9, 10, 16, and 17 into lots 2A, 3A, and 9A in the St. Rock neighborhood. Lots 10, 9, 16, and 17 are all zoned HURD2, Historic Urban Two-Family Residential. The rest of the lots, lots A, B, D, E, F, G, 2, 18, 19, and 4 are all, are all zoned HMC2, Historic Marini Treme Bywater Commercial District. The applicants previously submitted a survey that showed a configuration that created a split zone lot and lots with HMC2 zoning. This report went before the City Planning Commission at the June 15th public hearing and received a recommendation of tentative approval subject to an additional zoning change application to create a consistently zoned lot proposal. Instead of going through the zoning change process, the applicants requested a deferral to resubmit a lot configuration without a split zone lot. The new subdivision proposal was submitted to City Planning Commission staff with a new lot configuration on October 25th. This new proposal eliminates the split zoned lot configuration, but does still propose three new lots with irregular lot shapes. Staff finds that the, lot, that the overall lot configuration and creation of three major L-shaped lots is necessary to condense the existing bank facilities onto fewer lots of record and separate unused portions of the site onto a single lot of record while also keeping zoning district lines consistent and therefore recommends tentative approval subject to three provisos. Aspen, thank you so much. Is there a representative from Whitney National Bank? Hi, yes, my name is Brian Carmack uh, with Hancock Whitney Bank from, at 701 Poiges Street, New Orleans, 70139. Thank you so much. Welcome, and you have two minutes. Well, I just, um, um, I don't really have much to add on top of that other than the fact that, uh, you know, we did did uh, go back and look at this, this, um, this layout. And, and brought a proposal that does clean up the, um, uh, the 15 lots that uh, made up this property uh, into three uh, as requested by the board at that time. Uh, this will um, uh, allow the, uh, the lots to still be used in their current uh, configuration with the possible sale of lot 2A in the fu near future and, um, uh, and still, still be able to, to keep the current zoning. Uh, zoning plan as, as, it, as it is without changing any of that. Thank you that, for your time. That's all that I have to add. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant or for Aspen? Hearing none, we'll move on to resubdivision docket 149-21. Subdivision docket one, oops, one moment y'all. 149.21 involves a resubdivision of lots C, D, and E into lots C1 and D1, square 476 
in the 6th Municipal District, bounded by Daniel Street, General Pershing Street, Dry Street, and Napoleon Avenue. The municipal addresses are 4318 Daniel Street and 1922 General Pershing Street. This request is being reviewed against Article 5, Section 5.5.2 sidelines as the subdivision will create an L-shaped lot with a dog leg extension that exceeds 15% of the proposed lot. Lot C1 would have a dog leg that's about 54% of the area of the existing lot. So this dog leg would be created because the rear portions of existing lots D and E will be transferred to lot C. The rear addition to lot C would be set off, be offset from the rest of the lot, creating a new L-shaped lot in lot C1. While the proposal would create an unusually shaped lot in lot C1, it would eliminate two existing unusually shaped lots, lots D and E, replacing them with a single rectangular lot D1. The current subdivision regulations require side lines to be parallel to front lines, thereby prohibiting the dog leg extensions found in L-shaped lots. To allow some fle flexibility to applicants to create L-shaped lots, the staff has established a rule where they can support L-shaped lots where the extension doesn't exceed 15%. The commission itself has indicated that the 15% rule does not provide property owners with enough ability to expand their properties. So therefore, staff recommends in the draft subdivision regulations that a lot may be eligible for administrative approval if the dog leg extension does not exceed more than 40% of the main portion of the lot. In this case, the L shape of lot C1 would exceed that 15% threshold and a 40% threshold proposed in the subdivision regulations. However, as a balance, the proposal creates a more regular lot pattern. Instead of the current condition where there is one rectangular lot and two irregular lots, lots D and E, this proposal will create one regular lot, lot D1, and one irregular lot, lot C1. In staff's view, this represents an overall improvement of the lot pattern. This proposal is also consistent with the master plan. Therefore, the staff recommends tentative approval of subdivision docket 14921 for final approval subject to three provisos. Thank you, Valerie. Is there an applicant available to speak? Valerie and Paul, can you just confirm that there's no applicant? Valerie, do you have the name of the applicant? I'm looking for it, one moment. It's David and Alexandra Band. I don't see them on the call. Okay. Thank you so much. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Valerie? Hearing none, we'll move on to subdivision docket 150-21. Good afternoon. Subdivision docket 15021 is a request to resubdivide lots G and 4 into lot 4A in an HUMR2 historic urban multifamily residential district in an HURD2 historic urban two-family residential district. The subdivision would combine the lot containing the Chapel of the Holy Spirit at 1100 Broadway Street, existing lot G, with the abutting lot at 72115 Zimple Street, existing lot four, to create a single consolidated church campus. The church wishes to use the dwelling on Zimple Street lot for accessory office space, but since accessory uses must occur on the same parcel as the principal use, the two subject lots will be combined into one lot. The application must be considered by the City Planning Commission because it would create a new split zone lot. Currently, the church's lot is entirely zoned HURM2, multifamily residential district, while the abutting Zimple Street lot is zoned HURD2, two-family residential district. Split zone conditions are generally to be avoided wherever possible, so it is preferred that Zimple Street lot be zoned the same as the church to which its use will be accessory. The applicant will submit a rezoning application pending the outcome of this resubdivision request. 
The proposal is consistent with the plan for the 21st century. So the staff recommends tentative approval of subdivision docket 150-21 subject to four provisos, one of which is the approval of the rezoning application. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Is the applicant on? Hi. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> Great. My name is Emily Flagler. I'm at 3380 State Street Drive. I am the architect for this project. Um, I don't have much to add. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward project. It is um, a residence currently um, that the church and the church wants to use the building as um, office space to aid with the church and the community as well. Um, and we are, um, so that's why we're before you today. So that's all I have, thank you. And Emily, you're aware of the four provisos? I'm sorry, Ms. Flagler. Yes. yes Commissioners, I, I, do you have a question for Ms. Flagler or for staff? Thank you, hearing none, we will move on to subdivision docket 153-21. All righty. Um, subdivision docket 153-21 is request to resubdivide lot 6 and lot 21 into lot 6A. The site is located within the French Quarter neighborhood within a BCC-2 Bucure commercial district. The subdivision's regulations do not include policies which permit the proposed subdivision to be approved administratively due to its location in the Bucure. Therefore, the subdivision must be considered by the City Planning Commission. Combining the two lots would also create a double frontage condition in which proposed lot 6A would front on Charter Street and Exchange Place. Proposed lot 6A is rectangular in shape and would provide approximately 3,898.38 square feet in lot area. The subject property is developed with a commercial structure that is currently being renovated. The petition site is developed with two existing structures that serve as a single development site and share roof. Therefore, the Bucure Commission is requiring the property be subdivided into one lot of record. The applicant is proposing a mixed use facility that would include a bakery and five apartments. There are no proposed changes to, there are no proposed changes to the footprint of the development. There are no lot size requirements for residential properties in this district. Multifamily dwellings are required to provide a minimum of 600 square feet per dwelling unit. And as proposed, lot 6A would meet the minimum square footage required by the CZO. The double frontage lot is allowable given the built out condition of the site where there are no practical impact. There is no practical impact for double frontage condition. The proposed land use con is consistent with the feature land use designation for the subject site and the master plan. Therefore, the staff recommends tentative approval of subdivision docket 153.21 subject to three provisos. Thank you, Valerie. Is there an applicant on the line? Yes, ma'am. Oh, welcome. Please state your name and address. And you have two minutes. This, this is Rebecca Stansberry of Steve Finnegan Architects, 123 South Pierce Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70119. Um, we are the architects for the project. Um, the existing building is vacant. And um, like they said, we are trying to turn that into a bakery and five apartments. Um, in working with the VCC, they've asked that we resubdivide into one lot and we respectfully ask for your approval of the resubdivision. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant or staff? I 
I do know that there's three provisos. Are you aware? Yes, ma'am. Thank you all. Hearing no um, comments. Oh, go ahead. Um, uh, Madam Chair, I believe we have the applicant on the line for the previous subdivision now. Oh, okay. So is that subdivision docket 150-21? 149-21. 149-21. Yes, yeah, okay, so let's finish one subdivision docket 153-21. There seems to be no additional comments there. So then we'll move to subdivision docket 149-21. And if the applicant could state their name and address, um, you have two minutes. Hi, um, I, I believe this is for me. My name is David Bain. I'm sorry, I don't know how this happened, but I was expecting this to be tomorrow. Um, well, thank you for joining. Yes, please go ahead, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for thank you guys for hearing hearing this uh, request. I really appreciate it. Um, this involves uh, a resubdivision of uh, two properties that I own. Uh, one's my primary residence, and one's a rental property, um, and they are around the corner. They have adjoining backyards. Um, so this is uh, just a request to um, to kind of take resubdivide away some of the property from a, a, the rental property that's just unused space right now and incorporate that into uh, my primary residence to make my backyard bigger, just, uh, just so that my family can enjoy the space. I think it's putting the space to better use. Um, there, there's also kind of a pre-existing um, unusual layout of the lots um, that I, I think will serve everyone's best interest to, to kind of get rid of that. Um, it's something that we've always thought about, um, you know, the the potential for somebody else to somehow at some point acquire that property and then develop this kind of in the middle of the lot. Um, so that's something that I think this would also resolve. So um, again, we're just trying to make our backyard a little bit bigger. I appreciate you guys listening to this request and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are you aware that there's three provisos um, associated with this? Yes, ma'am, I am. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions um, for the applicant or Valerie? Hearing none, we'll move on. Paul will keep me on track. Are we at subdivision docket 153-21? No, subdivision docket 169-21. Look at uh, that. Even that, that's where we are and, and I can present this one. So I'll just launch into it. Um, this is a proposal to merge two lots that neighbor each other. Currently both of the lots is, or rather each of the lots is developed with the two story single. The applicant owns both of them and the intent is to merge them, dissolving the common property line between the two of them. The, the reason for the request is because the applicant wants to put generator uh, and a parking space for one of the structures on the other lot and you can't have that sort of thing uh, on on a different lot than the property than the house it serves and so the objective here is to merge the two lots into one so that the whole thing becomes one lot allowing the generator and the parking space to be located there the problem that arises is that even though the lot itself is large and rectangular and meets general standards within the subdivision regulations. This creates a conflict with the zoning ordinance because it puts two houses on one lot in this location that's generally not allowed. And that is what requires uh, planning commission consideration. And so the in terms of the lot itself, um, it's, it's sufficiently acceptable with the subdivision regulations but the approval would have to be contingent on a waiver of that prohibition of multiple residences on a single lot. And so the recommendation by staff here is what's effectively a tentative or conceptual approval of the subdivision. 
the applicant would have to go to the Board of Zoning Adjustments and apply for and receive a waiver of the regulation about two buildings on one lot. And then at that point, the subdivision could be granted final approval. So the staff recommendation is tentative approval with final approval subject to five provisos. Thank you, Stephen. Is there an applicant available? Is there an applicant available for subdivision docket 169-21? Hearing none, commissioners, do you have any questions for Stephen? Hearing none, we'll move on to property disposition 005-21. Property Disposition 00521 is a consideration of the disposition of a movable property consisting of a dead end portion of unconstructed Kellerack Street right away, located in the third municipal district between squares 1191 and 1192. The adjacent lots bear the municipal addresses of 1430 and 1440 North Brush of Lake Street. The city proposes to sell this portion of land, the dead end Kellerack Street right of way and has, and has a, which has a width of approximately 22 feet along North Rush of Lake, a width of approximately 27.7 feet, a depth of approximately 59.6 feet along Bayou Road and a total area of approximately 1,650 square feet. The party interested in purchasing the property is the Joan Mitchell Center, an existing permitted artist community. So any future development could be designed to fit in with the existing neighborhood development pattern. So the staff recommends approval of property disposition 521 subject to one proviso. Uh, and Madam Chair, we have Jonathan Cerise on the line who uh, represents the adjacent property owner that made the request through the city to uh, for the property disposition and the Department of Property Management has authorized him to speak. Uh, yeah, hey, um, I appreciate that, Paul. Um, so this is basically just um, a small- Please state your name and a, um, your address, please. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Jonathan Cerise, uh, 909 Poydras. Um, Perfect, you've got two minutes. Okay, and, and really I'm just, here to answer any questions anybody might have. Um, I think the staff report's pretty straightforward. Commissioners, is there any questions um, for Mr. Cerise um, or also Valerie? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item, 002-21. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, street name change 0221 is a request by Councilmember Kristen Palmer to consider renaming the entirety of Slidell Street from the Mississippi River Trail to Berman Highway as Red Allen Way. Slidell Street is approximately 1.07 miles in length with about 117 lots of record along it. Henry James Red Allen was a native of New Orleans and became known as the great trumpeter from New Orleans in the 1920s. His career spanned six decades and he became known as the elder statesman of jazz. Red Allen Way would replace the name of Slidell Street, which is named after John Slidell, a Confederate ambassador to France. Proposal meets the CPC street naming uh, policy criteria and the staff recommends approval. Uh, and I also have a um, written comment from council member Palmer, who is the applicant. If I, could, if I could read that. Yes, Paul, please go ahead. All right, uh, good afternoon. While I am formally submitting this comment under street name change 00221 Slidell Street, my sentiments relate to all three proposed changes to be considered 
by CBC today, two of which are in District C. It is unconscionable that as a city, we still have scores of streets, parks, and public spaces with names that do not reflect our value system. For this reason, the council unanimously voted to establish the city council street renaming commission in June of 2020 to ensure that there was a public process around renaming New Orleans streets, parks, and public places. The group met for almost a year, producing multiple reports and providing a forum for robust public engagement and buy-in. The process has received recognition uh, a national as a national model. The three streets you're considering recommending for renaming today, Slidell Street, McShane Place, and Robert E. Boulevard were among many of those the commission recommended to rename because they honor members of the Confederacy who betrayed our country and were inextricably linked to white supremacy. Renaming these and other streets is imperative to preserve our legacy as an inclusive city, one which welcomes diversity in people and culture. Specific to Slidell Street and McShane Place, I've undertaken additional outreach as both locations are in my district. While I appreciate and agree with the staff's recommendation to rename Slidell Street as Red Allen Way, McShane Place cannot be renamed as St. Claude Avenue, which honors Claude Treme. Claude Treme was a slave master and murderer, and his name is no, no better represents our values than McShane. Please review the history of Joseph Guillaume, who whose bravery prompted the early integration of the streetcar system until the 20th century. His name is a much better fit for McShane Place. I can request your attention and vote on the three proposed street name changes today on your agenda so the council can finalize the requested changes by ordinance without delay. Thank you for your diligent work and attention through my years of service. Kristen Palmer. Thank you, Paul. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Paul? Hearing none, oh, go ahead. No. So the, we were advised that there was some issue with notice, um, but that's not on this docket, is that correct? Correct, right. so I was actually just going to ask our um, executive director, to give some context um, for items 16 and 17 um, prior to the presentation. Are you ready for that now? Yes. Great. So um, as uh, Commissioner Whitry, Whitry has said, um, we have three street name changes uh, proposed for today. Um, the last two were submitted, um, requested by council members um, with the understanding that, um, with a specific request that we expedite those applications um, such that they can uh, be heard at the uh, January 6th meeting. Um, the, the, the issue that that raises for us is the city planning commission staff in, in receiving those requests is that the city planning commission rules include the rules that govern um, how we respond to requests. And in those rules um, are rules that include, uh, first of all, a time period of 60 days uh, within which the city planning commission uh, needs to move things forward for hearing. Um, and within that time to produce a, um, a staff report um, that includes recommendations from or responses from um, several of the uh, agencies that um, would need to weigh in, such as Department of Public Works um, and the uh, first responder agencies. It also um, requires notice to be sent to uh, the property owners who front on the street. And so because of the time um, the request and the expedited nature of the request, uh, the City Planning Commission staff was not able to, uh, would not have been able to um, abide by those rules um, if, the, um, if the requests were to be heard on the January 6th meeting. So what, um, what I discussed with the council members making the request is that we could certainly put them on the agenda, but it would be up to the commission 
to waive those rules uh, that otherwise would, would need to be followed by the staff. And if um, and so that the staff reports that were presented for those two um, street name changes um, were not complete reports. Um, they do have recommendations, um, but they are not complete. The noticing that was required has not been done. And so in order for those to move forward, um, they're going to need to be um, votes that would have the commission consider a suspension of the rules to waive those rules pertaining to notice um, and time frame and um, and referrals. Um, and if those if that vote um, is successful, in other words, if it adopts and the commission does suspend the rules and allow for those uh, provisions to be waived, then the commission could, through a subsequent vote um, and subsequent action, take action on uh, the substance of the requests, which is whether or not um, to make a recommendation on the street name. If the votes on the suspension of the rules is not successful, in other words, if the commission does not suspend the rules to um, waive those provisions, then the commission would not be able to consider the merits of the requests until um, those requests have gone through the uh, noticing and referrals um, as provided for in the rules. So um, logistically, the way this will move forward is that because we are in a virtual meeting situation, um, and the, the law requires that public comment be received in, a, in association with any action taken by the board or by the commission, um, we need to be able to get public comment on both the decision on suspending the rules, as well as on the decision, if it comes to pass, on the merits of the request. So the way we're gonna move forward is that uh, CPC staff is going to make its presentation um, of the um, of the limited staff report. At which time, um, and then, as we would normally do, um, the commission will take a recess where public comments would be received in writing uh, through the website, and those comments should be specific to the two different votes that are going to be taken on each of the. Um, street name requests. One, you know, so you, so if you have, if you want to weigh in on the, on the suspension of the rules, please have a separate written comment for the suspension of the rules, and then comments that are separate on the, the merits of the um, specific requests. And then once we move, and these are these come back after the public comment is um, received um, for each of the items. Um, we will read the public comment that pertains to the suspension of the rules and the commission will take action on the suspension of the rules. And if that vote is favorable, in other words, if the commission votes to suspend the rules, then the commission will proceed with hearing the merits um, of the case and will read the comments that relate to the merits of the case and then the commission will take action on the merits of the case. So we'll do that for each of those two uh, street naming requests. And I know that was a lot and um, a little bit complicated. So if anyone has any questions, I'm, I'm certainly happy to uh, answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rivers. So at this time, I think we are moving on to street name change 321. This is yes. a request, yes. request by uh, Council Member Kristen Palmer, consideration of the naming of the entirety of McShane Place, which connects North Rampart Street at St. Bernard Avenue to St. Claude Avenue as Joseph Guillaume Place. McShane Place is uh, just two blocks long. <clears throat> um, if the commission does choose to consider the street name change at this time, the staff advises against having a one or a two block length street name connecting North Rampart Street to St. Cloud Avenue 
to the average driver. This portion of the street seems like it should be part of St. Claude Avenue and proceeding on the major street is already confusing with the change from North Rampart to St. Claude. The staff recommended modified approval of the street name change 321 to rename the entirety of McShane Place as St. Claude Avenue. And um, that I noticed the council member made comments about uh, who St. Claude was renamed for. Um, it is, I, if I'm not mistaken, St. Claude Avenue is not one of the streets that is proposed to be renamed. So I just wanted to add that additional uh, piece of information. Thank you, Paul. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Rivers or Mr. Kramer? Hearing none, we'll move to street name change 004-21. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, street name change 00421 is requested by Council Member Jared Brissett. Consider the renaming the entirety of Robert E. Lee Boulevard from Peoples Avenue to Lakeshore Drive slash West End Boulevard as Allen to Saint Boulevard. Uh, if the commission chooses to consider this street name change at this time, the staff advises not including the first name Allen in the street name. There is already an Allen Street. And if street name change 00221 is approved, there will also be a Red Allen Way. The staff advises that Toussaint Boulevard is preferable for database search and emergency response reasons. Furthermore, the name Toussaint is particularly distinctive and uh, would instinctively be associated with the famous Allen Toussaint. So the staff recommends modified approval of street name change 421 to rename the entirety of Robert E. Lee Boulevard as Toussaint Boulevard. And I'd also like to note that uh, the, this request does not consider the renaming of West Robert E. Lee Boulevard, which runs from Ponce to Train Boulevard to a dead end that is a couple blocks from the Orleans Jefferson Parish line. Um, this does have a different name with the um, directional uh, west in it, in it and the, it was not included in the request from the council member. Staff advises this portion be renamed at other some other time to a name other than Toussaint because this portion is a minor street that the average driver would not think is part of the major street that is now Robert E. Boulevard that sort of turns into uh, Hammond Highway, New Orleans Hammond Highway. And we have council member Brissett available with us uh, now to speak as the applicant. Council members, Ed, thank you for joining us. Um, could you please state your address and your name to follow protocol, please? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair Wittry. Um, 1300 Perdido Street, uh, 2W20, um, Suite 2W20. Uh, and uh, Council Member Jared Brosett. Uh, thank you all, Council Member District D. Uh, thank you all for uh, giving me the, the time. I won't keep you all long because I know you all have a lengthy agenda. Uh, Paul, uh, thank you for the report. And thank you, Bob uh, Rivers, for your leadership. And of course, uh, this is, I believe, my yeah, first and only time uh, before the City Planning Commission, um, as uh, I do respect the jobs that uh, in a role that you all have uh, greatly, uh, and the work that y'all put in uh, to uh, bring forth uh, the land use issues before uh, the city council. And, and I just want to say uh, I thank all of you for your service. Uh, that, of course, includes uh, all the staff uh, at CPC uh, and the uh, commission members that put in uh, tireless hours uh, reviewing and getting ready uh, for you all's meetings uh, and the agenda that you all are here today and in, uh, in, in prep for. Um, uh, this is uh, my only and, and last time being before you. Uh, and it comes to a time uh, where um, it's uh, a time that is of most benefit uh, to the future of our city when we talk about uh, racial reconciliation. You know, this is more about just than just changing a street name. Uh, it's critical, I believe, to honor uh, one of our greatest uh, cities, our cultural bearers, 
um, and uh, cease and stop shining uh, uh, a positive light on uh, one of our country's most egregious uh, white supremacists. You know, renaming uh, Robert E. Lee uh, is, a, is a, a step in the right direction. Um, in 2021, I believe that Robert E. Lee should not be glorified uh, with a street name uh, and he should be relegated uh, to our history books. Um, in 1924, the street was named Robert E. Lee uh, Boulevard to reinforce uh, those white supremacist values. Uh, it had a street name uh, before that, uh, that was um, the bifurcated. Uh, and so nearly a hundred years later, uh, it is well beyond a time uh, for us to make a change. Uh, a shift to honor Alan Toussaint uh, shines a light on um, a musical icon who was born uh, and raised in uh, New Orleans and loved this city dearly uh, and was an ambassador and represented it uh, well. Uh, and it underscores the importance of celebrating uh, the accomplishments uh, of uh, our Black residents and our local and national history. Uh, Council said, I do want to keep to the protocol and I've um, given you just a little more than two minutes, but if yes. you could share a final comment with us, please. Uh, thank you. And I do want to stick to that, that time frame, uh, like everybody else. Uh, and I just uh, implore you uh, to take this step to honor a wonderful and, um, you know, end the glorification of white supremacy. Uh, I appreciate the uh, work of the Street Renaming Commission. Um, and uh, thank you all for your time. And, um, you know, let's do the right thing and start uh, moving forward. Uh, and uh, again, I thank each and every one of you for your service uh, to the citizens of this city. Uh, thank, thank you all. God bless you. Uh, and grace and love to you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your service as well. Commissioners, do you have any questions um, for the councilman or for Paul? This is Commissioner Mobley. I do not have questions, but I will be recusing myself on these two agenda items, having taken part in the uh, streets renaming. Thank you, Commissioner Mobley. I do have a question for Paul. Just can you provide some context um, on the Street Renaming Commission? Um, it was at the city council's request and that um, the members of the community that had met for the last year, was it, to dive into this matter? Uh, yes, I think uh, Council Member Palmer stated it was in, from June, uh, June 2020. Uh, so they had probably about a, a year of work. Um, Councilmember Brissett might be able to add to th that answer. Uh, and Councilmember Palmer put it right. And Paul, thank you. And uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Wittry. Um, of course, uh, Commissioner Mobley as well, uh, who represents District D. Yes, there has been a lot of time put into um, uh, not to take away anything from CPC staff, but, um, uh, you know, I think that was uh, an added uh, uh, value and added help to, um, to uh, the staff of CPC. There was a lot of time, uh, I would say maybe a, a year and a half, because um, there was a lot of prep work uh, to get this off the ground and running as well. Um, so, um, much time and energy uh, research went into this. Thank you. I have a further question along those yes. same lines. Um, so the committee that's been having these forums, these public forums to look at, isn't it like 37 streets? If I, it's, it's many streets, right? Um, have, have all the recommended change, name changes been put forward at this point? Uh, no, this is, uh, these are the first three, I believe. Um, we did last year um, 
Norman C. Francis, but that was, I think, before the Street Naming Commission made recommendations. And we did Fats Domino last year as well. And uh, I don't think that was part of the Street Name Renaming Commission. Um, right, I mean, have the actual names been recommended yet for replacement for all of these oh, streets? Yes, yes, yes. We have. Do any of them include a woman? I'm sure there, there are. With, with that I many, mean, really, and I'm sure really, that they, really they made an effort to include women and and all uh, a the diversity of New Orleans. Madam Chair, may I provide um, answers? General Early, I believe, is being replaced by a uh, Dillard University, uh, Mo Ms. Mobley. Yes, Com Commissioner Mobley, could you please provide the answers to Commissioner Lund's question since you have intel. Um, there have been several parks um, that did come before us. It was recommended um, by this commission and by staff um, that parks which did not require the same level of neighborhood planning notification um, be allowed to move forward. So um, what was our artillery park and is now Oscar um, Dunn Park um, was one of those addressed through this commission earlier this year. There are um, a number of proposed names that are women. One of the things that both the panel of experts um, made up of scholars from 15 colleges and universities um, and the Streets Renaming Commission took very seriously was recognizing the range of individuals um, in terms of gender and gender identity, in terms of race and ethnicity, um, in terms of century, and in terms of um, the types of and range of labor and expertise and service um, that made people worth honoring um, be as broad as possible to represent the city that we want to live in in the future, as well as the one that we have always lived in, um, where a diversity of individuals is what makes it great. So um, I didn't understand the answer to the question for me. Are there any women who are recommended? Are yes. there any seats recommended for women? Is it one, yes. two, three? Um, out of the panel of experts report, I think it was, I think there were 36 recommendations for women mm -hmm. out of the commissions, the street renaming commissions recommendations. I, if I recall correctly, 11. Um, and I, because of the way these streets are moving forward individually, um, there is room for individual council members to work with their districts um, to suggest a final recommendation that reflects that district. And so I don't know how many will come through as women. Okay. I certainly hope um, as many as possible. It's 3% of streets um, are named for women. Women make up 8% of money nationally and are only 13% um, of historical figures in our textbooks. Right. And we're 51% of the population. Yes, as a mother of two daughters, and if we're going to rename streets after people, prominent people, I'd love from my daughters and their daughters and all daughters to see some women be recognized as you drive along. Thank you. Thank you for the conversation, commissioners. Commissioner Lund, um, it's been a long time since we've taken up one of these, but I was recalling one of the, the last uh, street renaming reports that this body received and recommended to the council was for Henriette DeLille. It's been a few years, but I'm also reminded of an, a question I did wanna ask. I looked back at that report, which was quite comprehensive. And I guess this is a question for staff. Um, the elements that are quite uh, lengthy that um, are in that report are what um, you would normally include in a staff report on, on a street renaming, is that correct? And that the commission took up the names that they would like to see, but not the other elements in the reporting process that city yes. planning. Uh, do you mean the the commission, the street renaming commission? Right, the street renaming commission was 
to put up to 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 decide on names that would be replaced, which um, I think is was a great example of of how we can do things um, broadly and openly. But being um, as part of the report that you would normally put forth to the city planning commission, that that is one element of the report, correct? That's right. Um... You know, we and made a present elements would be in, in including other agencies and and um, and the property owners, et cetera, and also the contiguous nature continuous nature of the street, like not wanting to bifurcate a name um, and letting um, first responding agencies know about it. And um, the other elements of the report that would normally be included are quite lengthy. Right. Um, yeah. We made a presentation early on to the Street Renaming Commission, letting them know what our criteria were. Uh, though I, you know, I don't know for sure how how closely they they hewed to that with all their recommendations. On the to the two Sam Boulevard, we did have a bit of a chance to uh, review that because we did have a consultation um, with council members' offices about about the name. Um, uh, and in, involved in that conversation was uh, Chris Ard, who is the uh, electronic steward of the street names for the IT department. So that's how we know that, you know, Tucson is you know, like, for example, not used anywhere else in the city. Um, and that Allen's, there is an Allen street that could potentially be confused, you know, with if someone didn't say the entire name of Allen to sample of our or, or did say the entire name so so we did have some uh, some initial discussions on that mm -hmm. um, and we do have the street name changes scheduled to be considered by the planning advisory committee tomorrow and we can pass that information on to the city council um, before their consideration of the street name changes if if this were to move forward today good to know Commissioners, any other comments before we move on to uh, the business recommended for deferral? I hope this is a quick question, but of the 60 day time period requirements that may or may not have been met, what about the responses from the agencies, from city agencies? Were we able to get those? Uh, we, we did on uh, Slidell Street and for the other two, like I said, they're, they're gonna be considered at the That's planning tomorrow. advisory committee tomorrow. I okay. did hear from 911, which is one of the most important ones that they agreed with the staff's recommendations on both Tucson and um, and St. Claude. Wonderful. So I, this is Commissioner Steig. I think I missed in uh, uh, Executive Director Rivers' comments um, the timing of when we're, if there's a motion to suspend the rules, when did that get made? Does it get made? After uh, the recess, mm -hmm. it does. Yep. Okay, thanks. Just checking on timing. At this point, we have no other questions. Our next couple items are recommended for deferral. And remind me, Stephen, should I just call these out, um, the zoning docket items? Yeah, I'll just go ahead and read them into the record. It's um, zoning docket 107, 108, which is for 1200 Poydras Street, 109, which is for 3424 Louisa Street, 110, which is for 2600 Charters, 111, which is eight, for 8314 Oak Street, and then finally, 112, which is for 118 through 120 South Salcedo Street, 117 South Cayoso, and 3023 Cleveland Avenue. Perfect. Thank you, Stephen. Now I'll be looking for a motion for recess, a 30-minute recess that would be. So Madam Chair, I'm, I'm moved that we recess for 30 minutes and return at 3.30, um, 3.35. Is there a second? Commissioner Mobley seconds. Thank you. Commissioner Stewart made a motion to go into recess, come back at 3.35. Commissioner Mobley had seconded. Commissioner Alexander. 
Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Steeg? Yes. Commissioner Weedberg? Yes. Commissioner Wittrade? That is eight, yes, yes. That is eight yays. We'll have a recess and come back at 3.35. Thank you everyone for your time. We'll see you shortly.
Welcome everybody back from break. I'd like to take a roll call. Commissioner Alexander. Present. Commissioner Brown. Present. Mm. Commissioner Lund. Commissioner Lund. Commissioner Mobley. Commissioner Mobley. Commissioner Stewart. President. Commissioner Steeg. Here. Commissioner Weberg. Present. Commissioner Wittry is present. I'll watch to see if Commissioner Lunn and Mobley move on, move on or join us. There is oh. Commissioner Mobley. Oh. <laughs> um, Commissioner Mobley. Welcome. Uh, Commissioner Lund is here. Thank you, Commissioner Lund. Has everyone received the commissioners the public comment? I did not receive the email yet. Stephen has said he was going to need a few minutes to, to sort it after the, the end of the recess. OK, so we will just be on hold until we receive those comments and then start in. It's 337 now, and I'll just be watching the email to be able to see. Thank you, everyone, for your time. For those of you that have just joined, we're just waiting for our public comment to be received in our inbox so that we can review it and have Paul read them. So thank you for your patience. Missy, since we have a quorum, would this be the appropriate time to um, see if we would like to suspend the rules? I think 
we were going to wait to do that. Oh, oh, for public comment rules. Yes. I think we were waiting to see how much public comment we got before we did that. Okay. Um, but, but, you know, if you want to move forward with it, that's fine. Commissioner Whitry, or yes. Madam, Madam Chair, um, I'm wondering if we have those special rules in case, I mean, judging from the delay, it may be something we want to consider. I do not, but I'm sure that um, we have access to them. And what I would like to do then, I believe that we'll have lots of comments on some docket items and to be efficient um, in moving forward. Is there a need to suspend the rules um, due to the volume of comments? Does our council have, have, have those with her or um the previous rules that we've applied, or rules that we've applied in previous meetings rather. So on um, the ones that we read aloud say that we will we will read them in a normal speaking voice. And when the two minutes is up, we'll move on, but it does not have any time limit on how long we take public comment. Restriction is that it's read aloud for two minutes. So as a commissioner, you could make a motion to recommend how long comments are read on each side. Is that correct? Yes, you can do that. Um, you can also um, reduce the amount of time each person can speak. The rule is that we can put reasonable limits on public comment, um, but we just have to allow for public comment whenever we take any action. I so, would suggest making a blanket rule for all zoning to all items for the commission just to treat everything equally. So uh, we do have about uh, 90 comments estimated. So currently just for the public as well, reading of public comments, there's rules now are a moderator will read into the record all comments pertaining to that item that have been submitted in accordance with these rules. Comments will be read out loud in a normal speaking voice. The moderator will discontinue reading a comment once it exceeds for two minutes. Would any of my fellow commissioners um, entertain a motion? Madam Chair, if there is no further discussion, um, I would like to put forth a, um, a motion. Please, Commissioner Stewart. All right, I'll move that. Um, that for the remainder of the hearing for public comment, we hear um, uh, for 20 minutes, uh, pro both proponents and opponents um, for one minute up to uh, 20 minutes. Um, Commissioner Lund, I would second Commissioner Stewart's motion. Um, I'm kind of, could you clarify that? It didn't really make sense. Are you saying okay. 20 minutes total or 20 minutes for proponents and 20 minutes for opponents? 20 minutes on both sides and we'll only here for one minute based on the comments that we receive. And I'd just like to stress to the public that um, as a commission, we do take um, in consideration public comments, um, but we're kind of making sure that we're more inclusive um, of the public comments. This would be um, our actual regular rules are more restrictive than that. 
because we're only limit, limited to 15 minutes. Uh, so that way we'll hear from more people um, on the discussion. Let me go ahead and um, just repeat this motion so that we all understand. We would have 20 minutes for both sides, one minute each comment. And Commissioner Stewart had made the motion, Commissioner Lunn um, had seconded the motion. And this is due to the high volume of comments um, that have been received today. And this would be a motion to suspend the rules. And also, I just wanted to note for the public that all the comments that are received will be put into the record. We're not going to throw them away or anything. They'll be in there and they will be transmitted to the city council. So to share for the public, all comments that are received are do remain in um, record and will be proceeded to city council. If there's no other discussion, I will take a vote, Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Brown. We'll come back. Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Lund. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Steeg? Yes. Commissioner Weberg? Yes. Commissioner Wittry? Yes. Commissioner Brown? I believe she's had to step off. However, that would be seven yays and one absent. The motion carries. I'd like to thank Stephen for organizing all of the comments as Paul and I believe Valerie are going to get ready to read them. Are we in a position to move forward at this point with reading the public comment? We are, and uh, <clears throat> if I get tired, actually our newest <laughs> employee, Brennan Walters, may be the one taking over for us. So that's a little excitement for your day today. Oh, well, let's welcome you to the CPC public meeting. Brennan. Okay, turn on your camera, Brennan, and wave. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank seems you. Like, nice seems, 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 seems like a harsh way to, rec to <laughs> welcome a new employee, but. That's birth by fire. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for record, I believe that I, um, I will also help, will ask one of the fellow commissioners to help me with time. Don't all jump at once. Who just volunteered? Okay, thank you, Sue. I think it'd be good just to be able to have um, both. All right, Brennan, are you moving forward? I'm On the, oh, wait, let me read the docket item. Um, zoning docket 101-21, are there any public comments? No public comments. Okay. Any discussion? Staff? Recommendation is approval of the zoning docket with one waiver and seven provisos. It's Commissioner Lon, I move for approval of the zoning docket application 101 slash 21 uh, as recommended by staff with one waiver and seven provisos. Is there a second? Commissioner Alexander, I second the motion. Thank you. Commissioner Lund moved forward with approval. Commissioner um, Alexander approved. I'll call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Steve? Yes. Commissioner Weberg? Yes. Wittry, yes. That's seven yays. The motion carries. Zoning docket 102-21. Are there any public comments? No public comments. No public comments. Staff's recommendation is approval. Any discussion? Could we is there a motion? Yes, everybody to check their microphone and turn it off if it's on. 
Thank you. Is there a motion for zoning docket? Madam Chair, there, there's no further discussion. I move for approval based on staff recommendation for zoning docket 10221. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Zoning docket 1021 was moved um, in approval by Commissioner Stewart, seconded by Commissioner Weberg. I'll call the question, Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Um, Commissioner Lund. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Steeg. Yes. Commissioner Weberg. Yes. Commissioner Wittry. Yes. Seven yeas, the motion carries. Zoning docket 103-21, staff recommendation is approval. No public comments. Thank you, Paul. Is there a motion? Commissioner Lon, I move for a, <laughs> approval of zoning docket 103-21 as recommended by staff. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Lund moves approval with Commissioner Weberg seconding on um, the motion. Oh, I need Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Lund. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Steve. Yes. Commissioner Weberg. Yes. Commissioner Wittry. That seven yays, motion carries. Zoning docket 104-21, staff recommendation is modified approval. All right, we have several comments. First one from Will Krucko, 7833 Fig Street, representing the New Orleans Rowing Club in opposition. I oppose this change without further review and study into impacts on the traffic safety and effects of a, of a public launching dock on Bayou St. John. This change sets a precedent that new dock docking can be established without community review or input as on water use is governed by city park. That group should be the entity determining rules and access for the area and with their tight knowledge of all the organizations and individuals who use the bayou whether on a regular or infrequent basis. The changes to Bayou St. John water access should be made to support individual recreation, but not with for-profit companies on this public waterway, where pu for public commerce was ended in the early 1900s. There is a safety aspect to consider for the increase in water traffic on this body without new requirements for this new zoned area and the responsibility that either the commercial entity or the individuals as part of that commercial entity are now required to do. We also Hi. haven't seen, that was two minutes, okay. I, I think we're doing oh, one minute for okay. 20 minutes on each side. And Commissioner Stewart, could you help time as well, just so that we have some checks and balances? Yes, Madam Chair. All right, and then next comment then is from Drew Remsen, 6655 Vicksburg Street, in opposition. Concerns with various entities that were not given proper notice who have governance over Bayou St. John, including but not limited to City Park, controls all activity on Bayou St. John, Flood Protection Authority, maintains levy on Bayou St. John, local tax pay, fund the park and Bayou, wildlife and fisheries, etc. a change in policy to allow for profit entities to operate docks changes the overall recitational environment that the park has maintained. Have regulations for safety and usage been determined prior to issuing permits? This is not simply a zoning issue and we are talking about changing zoning without other entities input who are entrusted with the safety, viability, utilization and protection of Bayou St. John. We all welcome recreational activity on the bayou, but any commercial changes should be made carefully and with full input. We don't want a fundamental change to the landscape of Bayou St. John without due process. Time. Next from Michael Haas, 
4412 Cortland Drive, Metairie, in opposition. I am in opposition to the development and construction of a public dock on Bayou St. John at this time, given the limited notice and lack of detail provided. While I am not opposed to increased water recreation on Bayou St. John in general, it is my belief that a study by City Park of the various impacts of this proposal is called for and that the entity should provide a formal recommendation to City Council. Next from Laureen Lentz, 3300 St. Charles Avenue in support. I have lived here for 25 years and during COVID, I finally took advantage of Ms. Ardwin's enterprise. She was professional and made us feel comfortable doing something new. Her experience is invaluable. I went with my friend who has ADHD and it's been such a lifesaver for us to enjoy something relaxing outdoors, especially in the summer. Please continue to make waterfront areas accessible and freely available for residents to enjoy instead of the wealthy elite and the industrial interests. The stability of our communities depends on healthy outdoor options for our mental health. We should be promoting exercise and non-aggressive activities instead of just allowing things like the aggressive racing of cars down city streets, which no one seems to bear is ruining our quality of life. This is a great opportunity and Rhonda already has been working so hard at it. She deserves a great many accolades for her personal investment and commitment to this project. I urge you to support her as much as you can for the sake of our collective sanity. Next from Rhonda Ardwin, 3801 Toulouse Street, representing Bayou Paddle Sports in support. I, Rhonda Ardwin, Sorry, I lost this spot on the for a second. I, Rhonda Ardwin, on behalf of Bayou Pedal Sports, want to thank Councilmember Brissett and his staff and the New Orleans City Council for voting on this amendment and for working to make this policy path so that the public and private can work together to meet the needs of the community. The need for a public and private collaboration for recreational water access was described in the City of New Orleans Master Plan. With these changes, projects like Bayou Bat Paddle Sports, Public Service Docks, and the St. Bernard Neighborhood and Gentilly Resilience District will be able to start their dock portion of the project. This plan in phase two consists of a boardwalk, dock, and kayak launch plans. Bayou Paddle Sports has observed and served the public, both local and visitors alike, since 2011. We have designed a public dock and service area so that anyone can safely and conveniently access the beautiful water, waters of Bayou St. John. Time. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Next from Amith Nagaranjan, 1022 Jefferson Avenue in support. This will be a great improvement to the public for, to more safely access the water for recreational purposes. It will likely increase the number of people who would take advantage of this resource because doing so right now is much harder without the proposed dock. Next from Jenna Rosen in support. I would like to express my support for the boat dock and its benefit to the community. Thank you. Next from Graham Crawley, 6485 Come About Way in support. As someone who worked with Rhonda at Bayou Paddle Sports for nearly all of 2021, I got to witness firsthand how this company has helped foster the paddling community of Bayou St. John and New Orleans at large. I believe water recreation is a vital part of what the city has to offer and the proposed building plans at hand here would be absolutely, would absolutely benefit the paddling community in terms of accessibility, safety, and efficiency. We've helped to popularize the public space as a paddler favorite launch site not just for our customers, but for any New Orleanian with the, their own vessel and a desire to explore the bayou. An expanded dock would make it, make it so visitors and locals alike don't have to risk potentially slipping on algae rich banks as they launch. As an instrumental part of New Orleans outdoor recreation community, Bayou Paddle Sports without a doubt deserves this opportunity to take their community services to the next level and continue to revive and celebrate the paddling traditions of New Orleans. Next from Angel Gibbons, 5542 Chatham Drive in support. This will be a wonderful addition to the Bayou. We have made it a great place to walk and bike, promoting exercise and health. And now we can have, add easy access for kayakers and paddle boarders as well. What a wonderful idea, can't wait to use it. 
Next from Jake Webster, One Palm Drive, New Orleans, representing New Orleans City Park. I'd like to provide more information. City Park requests the commission defer the matter of a text amendment to ordinance to create a new category of boat dock to allow for additional time to discuss impacts with staff and stakeholders. City Park has oversight of the majority of Bayou St. John. While City Park supports public access, we request time to gain a thorough understanding of the change being considered. Next from Dorothy McKendrick, 942 Jefferson Avenue in opposition. Access to the waterways of New Orleans is a gift all residents and visitors should have. However, it needs to be done in ways that can ensure the safety of all users on the water and off, and with full awareness of the impacts to our precious natural areas. An impact study needs to be undertaken prior to any decision on this proposal because of the possible implications. The demand, safety issues, et cetera, need to be reviewed prior to this blanket approval. The lack of detail in the proposal is concerning. Has a demand and impact study been commissioned? What are the results? Have key stakeholders, city park, local homeowners been notified? What are their comments? How will policies surrounding water safety and safe traffic patterns be developed with likely increase in traffic? How will for-profit entities, private users be managed at these uh, public dock spaces meant for public use? Given that City Park has jurisdiction over water recreation in the Bayou St. John area, they should be providing governance and oversight of Bayou St. John as they have jurisdiction. Next from Sean Cheryl Shane, 5637 Evelyn Court, in opposition. More impact research needs to be done. Next, from Norris Butler, 3016 Cleveland Avenue, in opposition. I'm a home owner and I've been given little or any information about the. Um, sorry, that's a, another docket. Looks like um, we're done with. Um, 104. In fact, uh, the one I had read previously about more impacts research needs to be done is for 105. So. That's the last comment. Thank you, Paul. Is there any discussion? I think, uh, Madam Chair, I think we want to hear back from the applicant for rebuttal. Since we had some opposition, I, I'm not sure if there is there an applicant or is it just a city council motion? We don't have a, a designated representative for this application. Thank you, Larry. Okay. Right. So if there's, there's no applicant, then there's no rebuttal. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, I have a question for staff. Is this on deadline? It is not. Um, the deadline for this uh, application is February 8th of next year, so. Commissioners, is there a motion on the floor? As a rem reminder, it's modified approval for this zoning docket. I'd like to ask staff if they could um, tell us a little bit more about what modified approval would mean in terms of some limitations that some of the object people with objections have expressed. Right. So the modified approval, um, it, so the, the motion originally asked us to consider um, adding boat docks as a conditional use in certain parks districts, um, everything from neighborhood parks, regional parks, uh, in the districts that cover the marinas, both West End and near the airport. Um, the modifications that the staff made were to add a definition. Um, a definition wasn't included in the motion, which asked us cons to consider this. So the staff defined it as um, basically as a dock that allows the launching of non-motorized watercraft and listed a few examples of that, such as kayaks, paddle boards, uh, paddle boats, um, obviously things with no motors. Um, the additional um, standard that the staff is recommending, um, so the staff is not recommending uh, an off-street parking requirement. When we look to some of our uses for guidance, um, <clears throat> we found a couple of similar or similar-ish uses in the CZO like 
boat launches and fishing piers. Um, a boat launch requires, I think, one or two parking spaces per launch. Um, I, I think that what we came up with in the end is that we did not want to promote the establishment of a significant amount of parking uh, near waterways. Um, so what we decided to recommend was that no parking is required, but if parking is provided, that all parking must be um, constructed of permeable materials. So we thought that that would kind of offset any impacts of the establishment of, of parking spaces and um, in or near these, these waterways. Um, the staff does support what was included in the motion and that these would be uh, classified as conditional uses in all of these districts. Um, and again, those modifications were just to parking and, um, and to the definition, so. And if I could just add, you know, a lot of the comments were referring to that they haven't seen specifics of the proposal that, and that would be because that this isn't a specific proposal. This is a, a text change to make it a conditional use. The, the person um, with Bayou Paddle Sports is aware that um, she will need to file a conditional use application. Well, that's exactly the question I had. So thank you for that. There's not a lot of privately held land. There's not, a, so these would theoretically be cooperative endeavor agreements with City Park, with the dental school that gets referenced here. Like th th there's a lot of work that needs to be done here. Today's doesn't mean that we're putting up a structure. It means that we're providing a pathway that at some point this could happen. Yeah. Am I, am I thinking about that right, Paul? Yes, yes, and I, it's my understanding that they, they do need the state approval for, to have uh, this use on by St. John. There because are it's a waterway. at least two uh, separate permits that, you know, anyone must get from the state in order to establish this type of use. Uh, one of them, I believe, from the Office of State Lands, uh, they're requiring a letter of no objection from uh, the city in order to even apply for that. And that's the reason why, or at least one reason why this is moving forward, because this isn't a use that we have in the CCO. So it's not really, it's not something that we can consider. Um, and uh, in addition to that, the city code um, actually prohibits the uh, construction of structures on the banks of Bay St. John. So there's going to be a companion uh, or would need to be a companion uh, amendment to the city code in order for, for this all to actually come together. So. And, and it could be a little confusing also that um, uh, they've been talking about how they've been operating for many years. Uh, so so it, it's my understanding that Bayou Paddle Sports has been operating there for about 10 years, yeah. but they don't have any permanent structures. They sort of bring everything there every time they need to, to rent kayaks there. Correct. That's what I read, too, is that they're just bringing a tent and that they're looking to do something a little more permanent because it, it may or may not be safe to do what they're doing at this point. All right, um, this question is for Larry and Paul. So have we made sure that we looked at all the waterways to make sure that nothing is um, excluded from how this may impact if this motion does, if this uh, does move forward to city council for approval or if it's approved? I know we talked about Bayou St. John, but are there any other Bayou um, waterways that may not be covered by say a city entity or anything? It's a, you know, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, you know, everything that comes to mind, um, particularly the, the the wetlands in New Orleans East, Lake Pontchartrain, Bayou St. John, even the, the Mississippi River would would require some outside agency's approval. I mean, I, I suppose it would be possible if we were to have some, um, like a, maybe a regional park or even a neighborhood park that had some kind of water feature, um, which wanted to kind of incorporate something like this on a smaller scale that the city could um, have jurisdiction over. But for, for at least the waterways that I can, I can think of, it would require additional review. So for example, with Joe Brown Park, there's waterways, you know, mm -hmm. there as well. Right. This is the text amendment is just one step in moving forward. And then it would be a conditional use or approval by several other entities much larger than us. That's correct. 
and, is, and that's is, that's one one other reason why we didn't build in very uh, I guess rigid use standards because there are standards built in you know under those reviews that are going to determine you know length width uh, how the size of of the docks um, the use of the docks and uh, their um, I guess their impact on on those waterways so. But to Commissioner Stewart and Commissioner Wittry's point, the um, places like Audubon and Joe Brown are included in this, meaning they'd have to go through this process to put docks in. That is correct. Okay. Thank you for the discussion. And then just, just a quick question, what comes to mind? So like say, like Lake Willow, like Lake Bullard, um, if someone just wanted to put um, a dock in, then they wouldn't be subject to to anything else with this change. It you know it would have to be located in one of the zoning districts that was listed in the motion. Okay. Um, so if if it's not within one of those park districts, then it it's not even a allowable use. Uh, it wouldn't be eligible to apply for a conditional use. Is there a motion on this zoning docket 104-21? Staff's recommendation is modified approval and it would only be a text amendment in the districts that are noted in um, the application. Commissioner Mobley, a motion to move forward with um, in accordance with staff recommendation for modified approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Lund will second. Thank you. Commissioner Mobley went ahead to move approval for modified approval for zoning docket 104-21. Commissioner Lund second. Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Absent. Commissioner Lunn? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Steeg? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. Commissioner Wittry? Seven yeas and um, one absent. Uh, the motion carries. Zoning docket 105-21. Paul or Brennan, are there public comments? Um, 105-21, we have one comment in opposition. More, more impact research needs to be done. Uh, I'm sorry, that was from Cheryl Shane, 5637 Evelyn Court. And I believe Mr. Knighton, um, would he be able to provide a response here because he was, um, he's representing the city council motion on this item? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, I would say that. Uh, he does appear to be still be on. Okay, all right. Mr. Knighton, please uh, go ahead. You have two minutes, right? Let's see. That's all I need. Can you hear me right there? Yeah. No, I believe this study has been done. Is my mic on? Yes. Yeah, you're, that's good now. Yep. Sorry, new computer. The study's been done. Uh, you all have read the study multiple times. So um, I think the city uh, planning commission staff has put forth their recommendation that's to approve it based on the, the long history of this topic. That's all. Commissioners, any question for the applicant or staff? The current recommendation is modified approval for zoning docket 105-21. It's a city council motion. Is there a motion from one of my fellow commissioners? 
Mission Alana move for approval of zoning docket 105-21, uh, modified approval as recommended by staff. Is there a second? Commissioner Mobley seconds. Thank you. Commissioner Lunn made a motion for modified approval with staff recommendation of zoning docket 105-21. Commissioner Mobley second. I'll call the vote. Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Lund. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Stewart. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Yes. Oh, hold on. Yes. Commissioner Richard, yes. Seven yeas and one absence of the motion. Could someone please turn off their mic? Maybe it's Ryan or Reed. Thank you. Zoning docket 106-21. It's also a city council motion. Paul or Brennan, are there any public comments? Let's see, there are no comments for 106-21. If there are no public comments, does the applicant have an opportunity or do we move on? I just would I just want to say thank you all so much uh, for going through this for this number of years that you have and the support uh, for this project. But thank you all. Thank you, thank you for your commitment. <laughs> well, uh, this commissioner Lund, so I would like to put forward a motion to uh, approve zoning docket 10621 subject to is it 11 provisos? Yes. I um, the one thing is that I think that this is obviously this project, this development, it sits at the nexus, you know, Broad Street connection, Broad Street quarter and the Lafitte Greenway is so critical to the city. It's been so uh, pivotal in helping us, you know, even revive from the pandemic and helping musicians, helping the spirit of the area that um, I think the limit to 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights is, is unnecessarily cut short. I think it would benefit the musicians to play until 11. It, it, we haven't had any neighborhood objection to, um, you know, it's just in a location where it, we can allow that and other future requests for extending hours based on zoning docket 105-2021's passage would not meet the same level, I think, of, if they did, then they, they might be approved too. But I, so I would like to modify my motion to to have my motion allow for the um, venue to be open for live entertainment until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights. Not sure what I would need to do in the motion to uh, to put that into the motion. Can I get some help with that? Yeah, I mean, I, one of the provisos basically references the use standards um, that are recommended in the companion zoning docket. And so I think you would essentially say, modify that proviso to adopt the use standards referenced in the companion zoning docket, except to also um, allow operation until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights. Okay. Um, so I, I move for approval of zoning docket 106-21 um, with modified, well, my writing, I, uh, um, modifying the one proviso to adopt the use standards that are in the companion zoning docket 105-21 to allow for Friday and Saturday night live music to be um, played until 11 p.m. Is that clear? Yes, is there a second on this motion? 
Brown will second, and I, I thank you for understanding. I joined the meeting. Welcome back. There is a motion on the floor for zoning docket 106-21 with modified, uh, with one, 13 provisos, one of them to be modified for Friday and Saturday night for live entertainment to be until 11 p.m. Commissioner Lund made the motion and Commissioner, Commissioner Brown seconded. The vote. Can you get your microphone? Can you please mute? Mute. <laughs> Commissioner C, could you please mute? I'm not talking. I'm not, that's not my noise, I don't think, but I will anyway. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Alexander. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes, though I wish that we were doing your hours um, at council because I suspect that as the pandemic shifts that you're actually going to want to stay open later. Um, and that's the space where there's a little more flexibility. Oh, could you, can I, can I ask a question here? Is it missing, appropriate? Can I ask a question in the middle of a vote? I think we have to continue with the vote, yeah. correct? You all have trained me. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Mobley said yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Stieg, we'd love, to yes. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, Commissioner Weberg? Yes. And Commissioner Wittry, yes. That is eight yays. Commissioner Brown is back online. Eight, that's eight. And the motion carries. Would it be possible to ask a question at this point for my own uh, personal prerogative to get an answer? I, I just asked Commissioner Mobley to explain what she was saying just now. Would that be all right, Missy? Any reason not? Couldn't hear. You have, you, I think you can go ahead. Okay, yes. Honestly put anything forward that would inhibit the you know live entertainment vitality there it won't it just sets um a different floor um i just think that um the the flexibility of the discussion is better at um city council going forward but i think that we're that they are going to hear from you again because it's an incredible spot um and it will continue to be popular and your business plan will continue to change to meet that Okay, thank you. All right, let's carry on. This is for zoning docket 107-21. It's a city council motion. Paul or Brennan, are there is there public comment? I do not see any comment for 107-21. Thank you. Staff recommendation is modified approval. This is the um, text amendment for the convenience of the waste and recycling drop-off centers to consider additional of such to use tables in appropriate zoning distance, just as a recap. Is there any, um, so there's no public comment, but I know we have two individuals on the line that were the applicants. Missy, do we um, do we go ahead and ask for them to say anything or no? I think Missy would be saying that you could ask them questions maybe, but uh, they, there's no rebuttal. All right, commissioners, do you have any questions for the two applicants? Hearing no questions, then I will, is there a motion? Is there a motion for zoning docket 107-21? Commissioner Mobley motions a modified approval in accordance with staff recommendation on zoning docket 
10721 and no Missy, we cannot hear you. Is there a second? Commissioner Lund will second. Thank you. Commissioner Mobley moved for modified approval for zoning docket 107-21. Commissioner Lund had second that. I'll call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Steed? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. Commissioner Wittry? Yes. That's eight yeas, the motion passes. Let's move on to the division docket 055-21. Uh, the staff recommendation is tentative approval. Um, are there any public comments? No public comments. And just it's tentative approval with three provisos. This is the Whitney National Bank of New Orleans. Do commissioners have any questions for the applicant or their motion? Is there a motion for zone subdivision docket 055-21? Commissioner Lunn, I move for uh, tentative approval with three provisos for subdivision docket 055-21 as recommended by staff. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Mobley will second. Thank you. Commissioner Lunn went ahead for tentative approval on staff's recommendation with three provisos. Provisos, Commissioner Mobley had second. Um, I will go ahead and call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lunn? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Steeg? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. Commissioner Wittry? Yes. Eight yeas, the motion carries. Subdivision docket 149-21. Staff recommendation is tentative approval with three provisos. Is there any public comment? No public comment for this one. No public comment. If there's no questions for the applicant, then is there a motion on the floor? This is a resubdivision docket. Okay, this is Commissioner Lund. I move for tentative approval with three provisos for subdivision docket 149-21 as recommended by staff. Thank you. Commissioner Mobley will second. Commissioner Lund has gone ahead to um, move forward with staff recommendation at tentative approval with three provisos. Um, Commissioner Mobley has approved, um, and this is for subdivision docket 149-21. I'll call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner C. Yes. Commissioner Weberg. Yes. Commissioner Wittry. Yes, that's a yes. The motion carries. We'll move to see, subdivision docket 150-21. This is tentative approval in four provisos. The diocese um, of Protestant Episcopal Church is the applicant. If there are Questions for the applicant, please ask them now. Otherwise, is there a motion? This is Commissioner Brown. I would like to move approval uh, per staff's report with the provisos of the four of them. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Is there a second? Was there any public comment, Paul? Did I already ask that? Uh, there, 
There is not. There's one mislabeled as subdivision dock at 150, but it's for a street name change. Okay. Steve will right. second. Steve will second. Thank you. Call the question. So, um, actually, let me just confirm. This is subdivision docket 150-21. Commissioner Brown, go ahead and moved forward with staff recommendation, tentative approval for provisos. Commissioner Steak second that. I'll call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. yes. Commissioner Steak? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Commissioner Weber? Yes, my apologies. Yes. Yes. And Commissioner Wittry. Yes. Eight yeas. The motion passes. Can y'all hear me now? Yes. I had to switch to the phone. I'm on a city issued laptop and apparently they don't like Zoom. Welcome back. We need you. Um, zoning or uh, subdivision docket 153 21. CDA Holdings LLC. Staff recommendation approval with three provisos. Is there a question for the applicant or a motion? Question for the applicant or a motion. Staff recommendation. I move for, um, for uh, approval with three provisos of subdivision docket 153 21 as recommended by staff. Is there a second? Commissioner Mobley will second. Thank you. Thank you. Lund went ahead and moved forward with approval with three provisos for zoning docket 153-21. Commissioner Mobley went ahead and second that. I'll call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner C? Yes. Commissioner Weberg? Yes. Commissioner Wittry? Yes. With eight yeas, the motion carries. Subdivision docket 169-21. Tentative approval with free five provisos. Is there a, a motion or a question for the applicant? I think we already asked this of the applicant, but do you did understand one of the that the or one of the provisos, right? Is a waiver of the prohibition for the zoning hearing board for two buildings to be on one lot. So you didn't understand that. The applicant wasn't present at the meeting. Oh, okay. Um, but that is made very clear in the report. So, so okay. hopefully they understand that. Okay, thanks. Is there a motion for this division document? Um, in that case, I move for um, tentative approval subject to provide provisos for subdivision docket 169-21 as recommended by the staff. Is there a motion? Second. Brown seconds. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lund. Um, went to move forward with tentative approval with five provisos um, for zoning docket 169-21. Commissioner Brown second that. I'll call the question, Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Lund. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Steak. Yes. Commissioner Weaver. Yes. Commissioner Wittry. Yes. With eight yeas, the motion carries. The next item is the property distribution 005-21. Is there any public comment? No, no public, public comment. 
staff's recommendation is approval with one proviso. This is for the property. Motion to approve staff recommendation. 1444 North Rosha Blade. Commissioner Reberg. Is there a second? Commissioner Mobley will second. Thank you. Commissioner Weberg um, moves forward with approval with one proviso and Commissioner Mobley seconds um, for property disposition, disposition 005-21. I'll call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes, and this is a wonderful use for the property. Really, really happy to see it. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Mobley, did I miss you? Yes, and yes. Thank you. Commissioner Mobley, yes. Commissioner Stieg? Yes. Commissioner Weberg? Yes. Commissioner Wittree, yes. Eight yays, the motion passes. Street name change 002-21. Madam Chair? Yes. Commissioner Mobley, I'll be recusing myself for the following three items and then rejoining you. Um, thanks, y'all. Street name change 002-21. Staff recommendation is approval. Paul and Brennan, are there public comments on this item? There is. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and Brennan took over from me for a little while because my I think my microphone was not working, but we have um, Jeffrey Seymour, 2227 Royal Street in opposition. Though this comment seems to be more about the suspension of the rules, but it is labeled as uh, street name change 221. Shall I read it regardless? So thank you, Paul. I have a question. We did ask the public to comment first on the suspension of the rules. Shall we go ahead and read those comments or are they going to most likely be too difficult to find out what their comments are? Uh, no, they seem to be, have, other people have labeled their comments as suspension of rules, but this is the one street name change that uh, doesn't require the suspension of the rules. Okay, so currently we're just reading the public comment, um, not on the suspension of the rules, the yay, nay, and then. Um, Commissioner Stewart, will you help me time, please? Yes. Okay, thank you. Paul, please go ahead. Okay. Um, so, it, again, would you advise that I read this one that is labeled as two? 21, um, even though I believe it is more for suspension of the rules. I'm going to trust your judgment on. So, so right. Madam Chair, I, I think the issue is because this one was uh, properly noted. So the suspension of rules, if we were to consider suspension of rules, doesn't affect this one. Yeah, we're um, for it for this one. All right, I'm going to, uh, I'll skip that one then and we'll read it when we get to suspension of the rules. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, first one is from Tracy Santani, 6112 Pratt Street. Did we vote on the last docket item? We didn't We didn't take up the uh, Slidell Street one. Yeah, we have that one this to is, take up before this. This is Slidell Street. Oh, OK. We're reading the public comment on Slide Owl Street, correct? Okay, sorry. That's right. <clears throat> uh, ridiculous waste of money. All humans are not without fault. Don't rename, especially for another person without, not without faults. Next from Jeffrey Seymour. You know, that is about suspension of the rules. Um, Next from Randy Sparks, 3455 Camp Street in support. I am the senior Southern historian at Tulane University and I write in support of all the name changes proposed by the renaming commission 
especially of Robert E. Lee, there is no justification for retaining the name. Okay, the rest of this comment seems to be about Robert E. Lee instead of Slide, the uh, Red Allen. Uh, let's see. Next from Elizabeth Manley, 2615 New Orleans Street. In support, it's imperative that the council accept the recommendation of the committee for the entire street renaming process. City Council Ordinance M2170 made clear that street and place names honoring those who committed treason against the United States and actively sought to deny Americans their constitutional rights is not the story New Orleans seeks to tell about itself in the year 2020 and beyond. In addition, to his multiple diplomatic efforts on behalf of the Confederacy and the system of enslavement that it espoused, John Slidell did not even return to the United States after the defeat of the Confederacy. According to one contemporary observer, Slidell was one of several disloyal citizens leading conspirators, rebel enemies, and dangerous men who headed to Europe to promote the cause of the insurrection. He died in England and was buried in France. He does not represent the kind of stories we want to tell about our city in a moment in which the return of tourism is critical to our city. It is imperative that we set an example of what an open and progressive city embracing the narratives of all. Is that time? Yes. Of all of its. Yes. Okay. Uh, next from Lisa Wynn, 3512 Canal Street. In support, I support the street name change. Next from Shelby Mills, 3436 Magazine Street, in support. It is imperative that we move forward to a just future for this city. The renaming of city streets is a step in the correct direction by that New Orleanians do not condone bigotry, hatred, or racism. By renaming Slidell Street to Red Allen Way, we show that we value Allen's contributions to the world of jazz as opposed to the bigotry of the Confederacy. Next, from Alexander Bishop, 30, or, uh, 2416 Pine Street, in support. I fully support this change. Red Allen is an excellent musician and foundational character in music history, and recognizing his legacy would be a benefit to the city. Next, from Nadia Eskildson, <clears throat> in support. Street names are just one piece of the of recognizing people who have been historically marginalized and in some cases replacing the names of figures who perpetuated racism. Language and names matter, representation matters, but it is my sincere hope that city leaders do more to address systemic racism and the racial disparities that plague our city's residents, specifically our black and brown communities. Please vote to rename all these streets on the agenda today as one of many steps need to be taken to move away from our racist and cruel past and present. <clears throat> Next from Wendlin Midlow Hall, uh, Guantanita, Mexico, in support. As a native born historian, I grew up suffering from the false mythology of the so-called lost cause, which reinforced and enforced racism on all of us. Removing these dangerous, degrading symbols, including street names, is vital to the progress of my beloved home city. Next, from Thomas Adams, 2005 Congress Street, in support. I write as co-chair of the panel of experts of the New Orleans City Council Street Renaming Commission and in support of agenda items 15 to 17 to rename streets currently honoring Robert E. Lee, John Slidell, and Andrew McShane. First, a little background on the panel of experts that researched the history of these names, including streets honoring uh, the three aforementioned people. The panel was composed of more than 40 scholars representing Dillard, Loyola, Southern University, New Orleans, Tulane University, and the University of New Orleans, and Xavier University here in New Orleans, as well as LSU, McNeese State, the University of California, Berkeley, the University of Wisconsin, University of Illinois at Chicago, University of Chicago, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, the University of Pennsylvania, the University of Sydney, and Michigan State University. 
The panel includes multiple past presidents of the Louisiana Historical Association and multiple current and past officers in the American Historical Association, the Organization of American Historians. Time. Uh, and that appears to be the last one that was specific to street name change 221. Thank you, Paul. Is there a motion? Staff recommendation is approval for the street name change 002-21. Commissioner Brown will move approval. Second. I'm sorry, who was second? Jonathan. Jonathan. Thank you. <laughs> There's a motion for approval with stack recommendation of the street name change 002-21 from Slide Owl Street from the Mississippi River to Berman Avenue as Red Allen Way. I will call the question. Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Commissioner Logley has recused herself. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Steig? Yes. Commissioner Weberg? Commissioner Weberg? Commissioner Wittry. That is six yays, one recusal and one absent. The, the motion carries. All right, uh, so next I shall read the- This computer's not working that well, so- Convention of the rules comments. Yes, this is for number 16 and 17. We need to read the comments and then vote to send the rules. Is that correct, Missy? We'll need a motion um, and a second to do that. Um, and then it just takes a majority vote. Do I, do I read the comments first? The comments on the suspension of the rules? Yes, go, yes sorry. Paul, so Paul, <laughs> Mr. Kramer is going to read. <laughs> The public comment on the motion to suspend the rules, please. All right. Uh, first one is from Kenneth Logan, representing his family in opposition. We do not want to see the name of any of our streets renamed. We're sick of this foolishness. My daughter-in-law is part of the families of some of the streets. It's more than one culture in the city. There's several cultures, and it's not all Black people. Please have enough sense <clears throat> to take into consideration New Orleans is a historic city it's criminal just uh, it's just like carpetbaggers trying to rename the south i remember alan toussaint's family said he would not have approved of this remember that the man had a lot of good since he loved his city and you love the south i knew him personally you are destroying our city black people had slaves a lot of people had slaves in the old days get over it leave things as they are Next is from Sharon U. Landesh in opposition. Rules should not be suspended for two unelected council persons to move forward an inadequately reviewed proposal. Appropriate public meetings should be held for all neighbors to comment as appropriate. Next from Landesh at 19 Swan Street, New Orleans in opposition. Under no circumstances should any rules be suspended, dodged, or ignored when it comes to changing the addresses and street names of thousands of residents. We are a democratic nation of laws, a city of law and order in the interest of inclusion, transparency, and basic due process. All those should be noticed and a full open public hearing be made. There is no emergency to justify any shortchanging and bypassing the full analysis and notice to the public for input. 
In short, if you must change the name of Grandma Street, at least let Grandma discuss and vote on the new name for her home and address. Next from Seymour at 7424 Canal Boulevard. Uh, Bob, is this uh, considered an incomplete name? That we should not be the comp for? Yes, I would say yes. Yeah. Uh, next from Emily Ratner, 8424 Sycamore Street in support. The City Council and the residents of New Orleans have engaged in a lengthy and inclusive process to ensure that the public has every opportunity to participate in determining which streets should be renamed and which, what those streets should be renamed to. The street renaming project has experienced extraordinary levels of support and engagement, both within and beyond city government. Given the extensive process that has already taken place over a year period of a more than a year, please suspend the rules and allow consideration of these street renamings. January 6th is the perfect day for the city council to take up the issue of removing Robert E. Lee's name from one of our most prominent boulevards. Next from Charles Eugene Marsala, 2231 North Roadway, providing more information. Please do not suspend the rules for renaming the street item 16 and 17. Council members Brissett and Palmer have had six months since the street renaming commission's flawed report was presented to the city council. That report admitted that the legal name of the street was Tivoli Circle. Uh, however, the SRC pushed to, to rename the street and take away the Italian name by falsely claiming its legal name is Lee Circle. A lawsuit is now pending. Earlier supplied to the City Planning Commission are letters from the Attorney General's office advising that SRC was violating parliamentary procedure by pushing items through without proper public notice. The SRC was forced to rescind and redo motions. The renaming of Robert E. Lee Boulevard should not be done in a vacuum. Rather, the Planning Commission should ask outgoing Councilmember Brissett why he and other members of the Council after rushing the SRC did not take action on the SRC recommendations and now want the Planning Commission to suspend the rules and not obtain public input as required. Many in the community believe the recent Hi. Hi. That's the last comment. Now, there was, the councilman was here, so I don't know if there's any questions. I don't think that he's on the call anymore. So is there a motion to move forward and suspend the rules or not? Madam Chair, um, if there's no further discussion, I'll move that we suspend uh, the rules uh, to um, hear um, dockets number 16 and 17 as it relates to street naming changes. Is there a second? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and second uh, Commissioner Stewart's motion. Um, my reason for this um, is that um, uh, even though uh, there is um, uh, a gap in my understanding of the uh, publication in the newspapers, that's still going to happen before uh, it goes to city council is also my understanding. Uh, and this is not something that today is the first moment in the process. Um, we've had a lot of process uh, uh, inside of this. And so this is another step. And the final step is, is council. Um, and so uh, I'm very comfortable uh, with the action that has been taken to this point. Um, comfortable suspending the rules today uh, and comfortable moving this forward to the city council should we make that decision. So I am absolutely uh, in support of, of the motion of Commissioner Stewart. Thank you, gentlemen. There's a motion on the floor for Commissioner Stewart to suspend the rules, second um, Commissioner Wiegberg. And just for context, this would be because um, 
there was not proper notice by the CPC standards and also that there was not a complete staff report. So they're making the recommendation um, due to all of the, the comment in the commission um, that has been in place for at least the last 12 months. Um, their vote is to or the motion on the floor is to recommend um, suspension of the rules. So I will call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes, but I would like to say, uh, I mean, I'm in full support of this. However, I would um, like to somehow address the fact that we've been deferring items um, of some applicants that have, have, have bid at a cost to them. And I haven't seen the council member come forward for those expedited matters too that might have cost some other applicants significant um, significant revenue or lost financing opportunities, but I'm in full support of this. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Mobley has recused herself. Commissioner Stewart. Yes, Commissioner Stewart. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, no, thank you. Commissioner Stieg. Uh, I vote yes, and I do wanna make a comment that I think that um, as Commissioner Weedberg said, um, I don't think this sets a, a precedent. Uh, I think this is an unusual circumstance where there's been a lot of public involvement and public announcements. Uh, and so that's the reason uh, for my voting yes. And I don't think it sets a precedent for us uh, going forward. Commissioner Weedberg? Yes. Commissioner Wittree, yes as well. Commissioner so Lund, Commissioner oh. Lund, yes. Commissioner Lund, my apologies. <laughs> Given. Okay, Commissioner Lund. So that would be seven yeas and one recusal. The motion passes to suspend the rules. And now we will move forward with hearing public comment on these two items. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear? Okay, perfect. Yes, thank you. So we would be looking for public comment on um, 003-21. Thank you. All right, the first comment is from Lisa Wynn, 3512 Canal Street in support. I am in support of the street name change. Next from, oh, did I skip one? Larry says I skipped one. Uh, first, uh, right down, now the second one is from Elizabeth Manley, 2615 New Orleans Street in support. It is imperative that the council accept the recommendation of the committee for the entire street renaming process, but particularly this case of McShane Place uh, the City Council Ordinance M-2170 make clear that street and place names honoring those who committed treason against the United States and actively sought to deny Americans their constitutional rights is not the no story New Orleans seeks to tell about itself in the year 2020 and beyond. Andrew McShane was a politician who not only espoused segregation, but actively worked to perpetuate it across the city of New Orleans. His kind of leadership does not represent the stories we need to tell about our city particularly given increased attention to the history of real estate, redlining, and segregation nationally. Moreover, in a moment when, in which the return of tourism is critical to our city, it is imperative we set an example of what an open and progressive city embracing the narratives of all of its citizens and not rewarding treasonous and inhumane behavior looks like. And now uh, to Shelby Mills, 3436 Magazine Street in support, it is imperative that we move forward to a just future for this city. Renaming of city streets is a step in the correct direction that New Orleanians do not condone bigotry, hatred, or racism. By renaming McShane Place, we show that historic redlining districts and segregation was wrong, and the suppression of Black people owning property and interacting with whites is racist, outdated, and impacts Black generational wealth even today. It's great that this would be renamed in favor of the Yom, who forgot, fought to oppose McShane through civil disobedience, a major success tactic to disrupt racist statutes. 
And next from Alexandra Bishop, 2416 Pine Street, representing her four person household in support. I fully support this name change. The name McShane is no longer relevant in this 21st century and reflects a negative view of Louisiana history. Uh, next from Gwendolyn Mildo Hall from Guanajuato, Mexico, in support. As a native born historian, I grew up suffering from the false mythology of the so called lost cause, which reinforced and enforced racism on us all. Removing these dangerous, degrading symbols, including street names, is vital to the progress of my beloved home city. Next, from Olivia Barnard. 1653 Rusalind Drive in support. I'm in full support of the renaming of the entirety of McShane Boulevard to Joseph Guillaume Place. I ride my bike down St. Bernard nearly every day to the intersection of McShane and St. Bernard, and I am often overwhelmed by the city's outright refusal to take down the name of the man who insisted Black New Orleanians could not live in the neighborhoods of white New Orleanians. Renaming McShane Boulevard to Joseph Guillaume Place would allow for businesses along the route to tell the story of Black New Orleans as being the center of the fight for desegregation, even before Homer Plessy and the NAAC's efforts. This city has a long and inspiring history of the fight for Black equality in America. This renaming could help tell that story to tourists and residents alike. Thank you. Next from Thomas Adams, 2005 Congress Street, in support. I write as co-chair of the panel of experts uh, of the New Orleans City Council Street Renaming Commission and in support of agenda items 15 to 17 to rename streets currently honoring Robert E. Lee, John Slidell, and Andrew McShane. First, a little background on the panel of experts that researched the history of these street names, including streets honoring Robert E. Lee, John Slidell, and Andrew J. McShane. The panel was composed of more than 40 scholars. I'm gonna skip that ahead uh, because we've read this duplicate comment before and try to get the end of this person's comments. Um, panel members have authored collectively more than scholarly 100 books on topics in New Orleans, Louisiana, and Southern US history combined. As a panel, our purpose was twofold per direction from the City Council Renaming Commission. First, we were tasked for identifying streets, parks, and officially named places in New Orleans that fit under the purview of City Council Ordinance M2170, and of which Robert E. Lee Boulevard, Slidell Street, and McShane Place clearly do. Second, we were tasked with identifying replacement names in concert with members of the public who were given multiple fora to submit. Next, from Jeffrey Seymour, 2227 Royal Street, in opposition. It would be very helpful to know what standards of materiality the commission uses when choosing to simply disregard the public notice rules and procedures. Next, from, oh, that is the last comment for that street name change. Thank you, Paul. Staff recommendation is modified approval. And I'm looking for a motion for 003-21. Keep in mind that the staff recommended St. Claude Avenue rather than uh, Joseph Guillaume. So you should, if you want to go with Joseph Guillaume, you would need to state that more clearly. That is the modified approval, correct? Right, that's the modified part. Thank you, Paul. Well, I was showing a student. I went to the LSU Dental Clinic. They have this. Should someone here. please, if you're not. Thank you. I'm looking for a motion for the street name change, zoning docket 003 21. I have a question for staff. Paul, on this, um, the initial request was just to make it uh, the, the like two or three blocks. 
It, the, the quest to, is McShane Place is only two blocks. Um, it connects North Rampart, um, where it splits off into the Maroney to, to St. Claude Avenue. Okay. And, and the, the request was to change it to Joseph Guillaume Place. And the modified, the modified approval is to? Is to name those two blocks as St. Claude Avenue, uh, strictly for purposes of uh, less confusion to drivers to ha not have a street change name for just two blocks and then again to something else. That would that would be something that would would have been explored more more fully in our criteria, but that that is getting at one of our criteria. Well, it's Commissioner Lund, um, I move for a modified approval of street name change zero zero three dash twenty one, as recommended by staff. I get confused in that area, <laughs> and I live here. Um, so it's my motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Lun, your motion is to approve the modified recommendation yes. to do the St. Claude as the two block extension? Yes. I will second that. And if I may ask, I, I'm sorry, I, I need some clarification to that um, of staff. This would, this, this is in line with what uh, our policies are on the on the on the um, not breaking up street names. Is that correct? Or that's correct. Okay, I'm just without the report. That that's good to know. Okay, thank you. So there's a motion on the table from Commissioner Lunn for it with modified approval, which is in line with staff recommendation. And Commissioner Commissioner Weberg has gone ahead and seconded it. I'm going to call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lunn? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Stee? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. Commissioner Wittry? Yes. So that's seven yays. Commissioner Mobley has recused herself. The motion passes. We'll now go ahead and read public comment on the street name change 004-21. The staff recommendation is modified approval on that one as well. Right, and in that case, the modified approval is, uh, the, the request is Allen Toussaint Boulevard. The recommendation is Toussaint Boulevard. <clears throat> uh, the first comment is from Jane Eyrick. 1707 J Street in opposition. You are changing too many street names too fast. We live on these streets. I am opposed to changing yet another name at this time. Instead of changing names, I beg you to fix the streets. Robert E. Lee has been blocked to one lane for over a year. No one works on it. It greatly affects traffic surrounding a shopping center and Mount Carmel. Work on this instead. Next from Hunter and Sherry McFadden, 205 Fairway Drive in opposition. The problems caused by renaming streets include changing legal documents such as property deeds, passports, and driver's license. If streets must be renamed, then I suggest they, the victims of crime would be appropriate. Next from Michael Wallace, 6035 Garfield Street in opposition. There are so many other issues that the city council should be spending their time, energy, and funds on. Roads, sewage, and the explosion and crime come to mind. Let's solve those problems before dealing with issues such as this. Next from Kevin O'Brien, 935 Gravier Street in opposition. There is overwhelming opposition to the proposed change from the citizens who live on this street and in this neighborhood. Intentionally failing to obtain meaningful public input is antithetical to the concept of representative government. Limiting that input to email public comment in a 30 minute window is an abuse of the public trust. Uh, 
Next comment claims to be from Susan Guidry at 5, 525 Governor Nichols Street in opposition. I am totally against renaming Robert E. Lee Street. Because there could be more than one Susan Guidry. <clears throat> Um, next from Mark Schrader, 6783 Lewis, the 14th Avenue, in opposition. Time is picky in quote. Brassett asked the commission to expedite a renaming process that typically takes at least two months, citing a desire to approve the move before he and the four other council members leave office January 6th. This is an example of city government official privilege. The city has a process in place. The author of this proposal and two co-signers were all soundly defeated in their re-election bids and were rejected by the constituents they represent. The fourth member referenced was not democratically elected to her post by the people, but rather appointed to her post. The process should not be expedited for these four folks. Normal policies and procedures should be followed so community stakeholders can have proper and significant input. This change affects two district. Council A's councilman is absent as an author or co-signer. Rather than rushing a controversial and divisive change, perhaps a compromise proposal should be proposed that he can agree with. District uh, A's... Thank you. <clears throat> Next from Gerald Lanassa, 4408 Congress Drive, in opposition. Thank you for your service. Please allow me to voice my public safety concerns with any Orleans street name or address changes. I believe the public safety risks of any dramatic street name or address change outweigh the potential that some may be offended or upset by a name or label they do not like. Street naming and addresses are important. Order and consistency in community life is important. Making communities more efficient and co convenient, ease in locating places and facilities within a community should be encouraged. Dramatically changing a property address for vanity is risky, expensive, disruptive, and unnecessary. If a street name must be changed, why not strive to stay as close to the original label? Example, simply shorten a name like Robert E. Lee to Lee Street, or Robert Boulevard, or even E. Most importantly, the choice of any address, name, or label change should be led by those most invested, the individual property owners and residents most impacted. For those that Thank you. Next from Hunter and Sherry McBadden, 205 Fairway Drive in opposition. Renaming streets causes problems with legal documents such as property deeds, passports, and driver's licenses. If there is so urgent a need to bypass history, then rename the streets for victims of crime so we can all remember them. Next from Martin Clatt, 327 Arado Street in opposition. Politicians, when promoting these bait and switch solutions, seek to do something when they actually do nothing. These folks promoting the cult of the woke cause like to say to their opponents, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. The reality is that they can neither walk nor chew gum. The three so-called woke supremacists authoring or sponsoring this change were all rejected by the people of New Orleans. Their failures as leaders have led to increased crime and infrastructure failures as they whistle Dixie, while changing park and street names. A better name for Robert E. Lee and Lakeview would be criminals check door handles to find guns or money. It would be representative of what New Orleans is today under their watch and would really help honor everything we love about New Orleans. Okay. Next from Sandra Gerhold, 215 North Rendon in opposition. We are living in point in time where everything is political and woke. This is not a PC city. We are embrace our history. We do not judge it or whitewash it. And the argument about honoring dishonorable people is baloney because there is no effort to find out what the totality of these people are. The people judging the people are hypocrites and the bottom of the barrel. We cannot judge anyone by the one thing they did that we think is evil. People are judged by the totality. All they have to do now is throw the word slavery uh, a native. I find this offensive and problematic. I drove through Central City and didn't know where the hell I was because of the streets changing names. As a city, historic city, the City Planning Commission should do everything to keep its history and never apologize. There is one point in time and this is not even the will of the majority. Don't let a handful of ignorant people make a mess of our beautiful city. These names are familiar and part of our history. 
at time. Thank you. Thank you. Next from Gary Hall, 2293 Appaloosa Trail, High Ridge, Missouri, in opposition. As someone who has visited New Orleans in the past, I enjoy learning of its history. When I visited there, the site of the Battle of New Orleans enjoyed the park rangers rec recounting the battle. Those who are renaming streets and tearing down monuments will not stop. They are about the writing. They are not about writing wrongs, but about erasing our nation's past. One day, the site of the Battle of New Orleans might be no more. I implore the city of New Orleans not to give into the radical elements demanding these un-American demands. Next from Anna Whitlow, 1717 J Street, in support. I support the renaming of Robert E. Lee Boulevard to Allen Toussaint Boulevard because I want the streets in my neighborhood to reflect the heroes of New Orleans rather than the heroes of war fought to preserve slavery. Alan Toussaint was a neighbor and a musical legend, and I am excited for the opportunity for us to celebrate his legacy. Next from Rory Payne, 2249 Brainerd Street, in support. Please rename this atrocity of a name. We are a multiracial city, and Robert E. Lee led the effort to win the Civil War in favor of slavery. Alan Toussaint is the best New Orleans has to offer and had to encounter the indignity of living in this street for much of his life. Please correct this injustice. <clears throat> Next from Ryan Williams, 8627 Jeanette Street, in support. Our city deserves to celebrate the fascinating and talented individuals that made this place the wonderful city it is, not reinforce its dated, degrading, and ultimately dangerous worldview. Let's take this opportunity to uplift the entire city by acknowledging the distinct class and talent uh, of native son, Alan Toussaint, who shared his music and grace with the world. Next from Emily Ratner, 8428 Sycamore Place, in support. Please do not defer this issue and please change the name of the street to Robert e, from Robert E. Lee to Alan Toussaint. There cannot be any name more worthy of removal from our city's streets than Robert E. Lee. As the council has recognized through its street renaming commission, Lee has virtually no personal connection to our city and his sole claim to historic significance is his leadership role in a failed insurrection. His name is synonymous with white supremacy. It's embarrassing to use his name in everyday parlance as a way to orient ourselves within a city that deserves better. The city council has wisely engaged in a thoughtful process to discern which names should be changed and what those names should become. Through the commission's work, the council has selected for this renaming Alan Toussaint, a true native son who represents the best of our city and whose passion continues to unite people across their differences and brings honor and prestige to our city. Please stay on the path that you have designed and respect the contributions of the great many New Orleanians who have participated in this process with you. Please change this embarrassing name and please do it now. There is no reason for further delay. Next from Colin Rheingold, 1131 Marini Street in support Please support changing the name away from Robert E. Lee. Next from Rom, Ron Gubitz, 2808 Upper Line Street. In support, Alan Toussaint is an American and all New Orleans treasure. While I think we should rename all streets after Mr. Toussaint, changing Lee to Toussaint is a beautiful tribute to a man who wrote, influenced and impacted most of American music. Next from Romaine, Bozix, 3313 St. Claude in support. The prospect of renaming Robert E. Lee Boulevard, Allen to St. Boulevard is a run, wonderful prospect that would honor an important contributor to New Orleans culture, specifically that close to UNO and their famed jazz program and send the city to a path to renewed connection with its history. Please proceed. Next from Peter Bodenheimer, 922 General Taylor Street in support. It's well past time that we finally correct the record in our city and rename a street that formerly honored a traitor to the United States who fought to keep human beings enslaved for no reason beyond the color of their skin and an incorrect belief that one race was superior to another. By renaming this street for a man um, who was the very best of New Orleans and lived on that very street is incredibly fitting and should be supported. Any arguments that this is about history are misplaced and misleading. The war between the states was to ensure that slavery remained legal and any arguments to the contrary are based on a purposeful twisting of history. Please vote to enact this agenda item and take a small step in making New Orleans better reflect the best parts of itself. Next from Shelby Mills, 3436 Magazine Street in support. It is imperative that we move forward 
simply just future for this city. The renaming of city streets, particularly Robert E. Luke Boulevard, is a step in the correct direction. The New Orleanians do not condone bigotry, hatred, or racism, but rather celebrate the accomplishments and local talent that is of that bring life and prosperity to New Orleans. Alan Toussaint deserves to be celebrated in this way. With decades of his life contributing to world-changing music, his legacy has much more weight in the history of jazz and history in general than Lee had with losing the Confederacy, which only existed as a five-year campaign bound in hatred. Next, from Elizabeth Manley, 2615 New Orleans Street, in support. It is crucial that the council accept the recommendation of the committee for the entire streets renaming process, but most particularly this case of Robert E. Lee. City council ordinance uh, made it clear that the street and place names honoring those who committed treason against the United States and actively sought to deny Americans their constitutional rights is not a story New Orleans seeks to tell about itself in the year 2020 and beyond. In addition to the fact that Robert E. Lee has no connections to the city of New Orleans, his legacy is one of segregation, enslavement, division, and white supremacy. According to the commission report, the placement of a statue in his honor at Tivoli Circle occurred in 1884, organized by supporters of the lost cause ideas which downplayed the centrality of slavery in motivating the rise of the Confederacy and sought to maintain the centrality of white supremacy in Southern social, economic, and political life after the war. These people also sought to promote permanent white control of black life and labor in the post-war South. The installation of the Lee statue and the naming of streets without. Uh, Thank you. Next, from Lisa Wynn, 3512 Canal Street in support. I support, I am in support of the street name change. Next, from Jonathan Earl, 1303 Burgundy Street, New Orleans, in support. Professional historian here. PhD, Princeton, 1996, renaming a street for a proud native citizen instead of a trader who never visited our beautiful city is fully fitting. Lee didn't care about New Orleans or Louisiana or majority of its residents. Two Cent Street is the lovely alternative. I support this measure. Next from Chris Plunkett, 112 Bourgeois Court, in support. I have lived in New Orleans my entire life and I am now studying to obtain a PhD in history from Tulane. I study Civil War memory specifically, especially how the lost cause narrative of the war focused so much on honoring bravery, military valor, that we forgot the true cause of the war. Both as a lifelong resident and as someone who studies this subject, I wholeheartedly support renaming Robert E. Lee Boulevard. These street names were always intended to signal who was and who was not welcome in the city, and that impact is still left today. New Orleans has changed many street names before as our community values have changed. There is historical precedent for this already, allowing our streets to consciously or unconsciously honor men who fought for slavery is unconscionable. Next from Amanda McPhillin, 801 Loke Place, New Orleans, in support. As resident of Lakeview, I support changing Robert E. Lee Boulevard to Alan Toussaint Boulevard. History is not a static thing. Every generation has a relationship to the generations before. And from time to time, we should reflect on who we are honoring as a city and why. Robert E. Lee fought to uphold the institution of slavery. Alan Toussaint was an artist and a trailblazer. I would like to see our roads reflect who we are as a city now. Next from Alexandra Bishop, 2416 Pine Street. In support, I wholeheartedly support this name change. New Orleans builds itself on tourism and keeping the Lee name will reduce the likelihood that people visit. However, much excitement and cuisine tourism can be generated by changing the name to Allen Toussaint Boulevard. Next from Hannon Laplace, 1303 Mystery Street, in support. I fully support the renaming of the entirety of Robert E. Boulevard to Allen Toussaint Boulevard. There's no better individual to represent the city of New Orleans, and he and his family deserve honor. Next from Ethan Elstad, 1307 Aretha Castle Haley Boulevard representing the Music and Culture Coalition of New Orleans. I am writing on behalf of the Music and Culture Coalition to strongly support the name change from Robert E. Lee Boulevard to Allen Toussaint Boulevard. With the support of the Toussaint family, this should be an incredibly easy call. Remove the name of a white supremacist traitor and honor one of the most beloved New Orleanians of all time. What else needs to be said? History is watching. Next from Ashley Haspel, 1312 New York Street, in support. Yes, I support this. However, the whole process failed from the beginning. Nobody who lives on Robert E. Lee was ever contacted. 
either were any of the District D neighborhood leaders by Jared Brissett's appointment on the commission, Kevin Jackson. Let's get rid of this shameful name as soon as possible. Next from Allison Toussaint Lebeau, representing the Toussaint family in support. Our father, Alan Toussaint, was a quintessential New Orleanian and citizen of the world. He would be excited that the place he loved most, New Orleans, was attempting to honor him in this way. Renaming Robert E. Lee Boulevard Toussaint Boulevard is meaningful to our family and respectful of our father's memory. Alan Toussaint loved music and the city of New Orleans. He was blessed to be among, uh, to bring uh, those two worlds together by bringing everyone from Paul McCartney to Patti LaBelle to the city he so loved. To work with our father was to come to New Orleans and get the essence of the city that nourishes his creativity and his soul. He was a uniter of people, cultures, and hearts. Our hope is that replacing Robert E. Lee with the Toussaint name will help bring more New Orleanians together in meaningful ways, much like his music. The Toussaint family is 100% in favor of renaming Robert E. Lee Boulevard for our father, and we maintain our belief that it should run the entire length of what we know now as Robert E. Lee Boulevard. We, like our father, want to bring people Bye. together and create more perfect harmony. And I have a question. I just want to fact check here. We've had um, 20 comments um, on this side in equal of 20 minutes. Commissioner Stewart, are you in agreement or not? Um, so, uh, Madam Chair, I actually had one more comment, unless I missed one. I was at actually, I was at 19. Okay, good. Well, then let's just go ahead and read one more. The next comment will be, uh, as far as my calculation, will, will be uh, 20. And right now, at opposed, we have um, 11. And then... Correct. Hey, can I just ask, Paul, did we hear the full comment from the Tucson family? I think it's important that we give them the honor of, if anyone, of, of, of hearing the full statement. The only sentence we missed was, thank you for your work and this honor. Allison. I appreciate it. I appreciate the Tucson family weighing in. That's important. So thank you for the comment. Um, so we're reading just one more. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip the next one of Joseph C. Since it's an incomplete name, uh, Tony Jones, 2111 Dumain Street, uh, in support. Confederates do not belong on our street signs. We must have a city that is safe for Black New Orleanians. Thank you, Paul. Are there any comments from any commissioners or a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I think we, we have one more to read in opposition. This would be like the last comment. Is that correct, Paul? Is there one more? Um, right. We already had a comment from Charles Marcel. Ray Landash. And we already had a comment from Ray Landash. All right. Well, that that concludes it. Then I thought Ray was uh, the last one on on our uh, notice. I thought we missed that one. I'm willing to make a motion. Yes, before that, I appreciate everyone's checks and balances and, and, the, and the time and the help with that. Teamwork here. Yes, Commissioner Weberg. Yeah, um, and, and happy to, to have some discussion on this. I'm going to make a motion that we approve the staff recommendation um, as uh, modified uh, to be Toussaint Boulevard. Um, I am a um, believer that you cannot actually eliminate history, um, but history is complicated. And this is as fantastic an opportunity as we have to take one of the great sons of this city, the great children of the city, the great people of the city and put their name across it. Um, I appreciate uh, Allison and the Laveau uh, Tucson family for, for weighing in on this. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to, to, to hear that they feel like it would be an honor. Um, I think the honor is New Orleans to have Mr. Tucson's name across it. So it is enthusiastically that I 
uh, move to accept staff recommendation of Tucson Boulevard uh, for the length of Robert Henry Drive. And I will secondly, uh, will gladly second um, that motion made by uh, Commissioner Weberg. And I'd just like to add to it is that, um, just like um, Kyle alluded to, is that, um, is that Tucson is a great culture barrel for the city. Um, changing a, a street name that's, doesn't um, change history, um, but I think it, it provides a, a bright side of, of, of a changing point in the city of New Orleans. Uh, the Street Naming Commission uh, thoroughly did research um, on the street and also Mr. Tucson and came back with that recommendation. So I would gladly support that um, and that change. Um, and I look forward to receiving other the street name changes and taking action on those as well. So I gladly second that motion. Thank you both. Commissioner oh, Weberg has gone ahead and made a motion for modified approval with this, within staff's recommendation. It's with staff's recommendation and Commissioner Stewart um, seconded. I'll call the question. Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Lund. Did we lose Commissioner Lund? Okay. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Steeg? Yes. Commissioner Lund? I'm just, I, I got kicked off for a minute. I, 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 um, I am voting for this, but I, I, I have to say something that I actually wanted to make a motion that I couldn't access my microphone to make this is that I, I just feel strongly that his name, Alan Toussaint, is, is, Toussaint is, is important in its entirety and overrides the um, concern for the repeat of Alan. I mean, we had Jefferson Davis Parkway along with Jefferson Avenue. We have Beyonce Simon, we have Dr. Norman Francis. And I uh, thought I'm going to vote for the motion. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Nunn. Noted on your comments as well. Uh, Commissioner Steeg. Um, I already voted yes, but if I get two votes, I'll vote yes again. <laughs> you only get one vote, and so yes. I do. <laughs> Commissioner Weberg. <laughs> I have, yes, I have vote yes, and I, while I appreciate Commissioner Lund's um, comments, and, and and I want to allow for the Zoom technology because we had a commissioner who was uh, falling out based on the on the the technology, not on her desire to be part of this. Um, I want to honor staff on this um, that that their recommendation was to to have all of the GIS mapping and all of the safety concerns uh, considered in that. So um, I I too am passionate about. Um, uh, making sure that Mr. Tucson is recognized in this. That said, uh, I also want to hear staff, um, and I thank uh, uh, you for the comments. Uh, I also thank all the work that went into um, uh, the staff uh, getting this to a place where we could have this this today. So my, my uh, vote is yes. Commissioner Wittry, that is yes as well. That is seven days. The motion passes. Uh, Commissioner uh, Wittry, uh, could you tell me who was the second on that one? Yes. Yeah, Stewart. Yeah. You were? Okay. Stewart. Stewart. Thank you. Weberg, then Stewart. I believe our last order of business is for a motion um, to defer the next zoning docket 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Steak so moves. Is there a second? Probably seconds. And uh, Stephen, would you like us to read out the zoning dockets? Can you read them out and say what date you want to defer them to? Commissioner Steak. So, right. So uh, to the next meeting date. Do I need to say that? So we don't have another meeting in December. So the first meeting in January of 2022? That's uh, January 11, 2022. 
That, so to January 11, 2022. Could you also read out the zoning dockets? Um, or... I don't have the numbers, but if Missy or someone could read them out, I could incorporate them into my motion. Um, I'm happy to read them out. Great. Zoning docket 108-21, zoning docket 109-21, zoning docket 110-21, zoning docket 111-21, and zoning docket 112-21. Great. So I moved to move all those zoning dockets to the meeting on January 11, 2022. And the second on that was Commissioner Mobley. I will go ahead and call the question. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Lund? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Steeg? Yes. Commissioner Weberg? Yes. Commissioner Wittry? Yes. That is eight yeas. The motion carries. I am looking for a motion to adjourn, but would like to honor Commissioner Mobley for her service as a city planning commissioner. She has been an honor to serve with. Today is her last meeting. Here, here. Thank Very sad. You. Yes. Thanks, y'all. Um, I will motion to adjourn. Hmm. It will Second. be sad not to have you at these meetings in the future. Thank you for your service to the city and to this commission. Thank you, Kelly. I promise to send in lengthy public comments citing historical precedent. That was actually the best nope. part of having you on the commission was not to have to get your comments. I know. <laughs> Maybe you'll join us again in the future. That would be nice. Y'all, um, happy holidays. Really great to see everyone. And thank you so much for everyone's time and energy. And welcome our new um, staff um, member, team member, Brennan. Look forward to working with you and meeting you in person one day. Thank you. <laughs> great job, Commissioner Wittry, for your first time out. This was trial by fire, too. Thank you. I appreciate the support. And a happy birthday to staff member Joseph Colon, who is hiding in the background. <laughs> Dude, and everything and a tie. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, all, all in favor, meeting adjourn. Please raise your hand. I see all of you. All right, thank you all so much. Bye bye, everybody.